Paul wanted me to... Little Paul's producing, say, good morning. Wanted me to be com contemplative when I opened the show today. And he said, looking up to the left is contemplative. Anyway, morning. Oh, no, it's not that yet. Morning, how are you? Now, I promise I'll be a bit better today, because I was rubbish yesterday. Because uh, I blame the flu jab. I blame the flu jab completely. And Lucy Brennan. I blame her, too. Anyway, got a lovely day lined up today. Would you like to have a look at the menu? It's a very mix and match day today. Come out today on Technique. That only just fits. Look, techniques, tools and fabric treats. Eight o'clock, we've got the Bird of Paradise block, which I'll explain to you about in a second. Nine o'clock, we are doing everything under £15. That's me on my own. It will be fast, it will be furious, and it will be fun. Uh, Ten o'clock, Lucy's making a table runner, and we've got lovely bundles uh, to, um, uh, for your delectation for you to choose from. And then 11 o'clock now, it's John's workroom. It's not the big show. I haven't got Sheila the model in today, but I am showing you how to get a basic block and manipulate it into either a semicircular skirt or a circular skirt, depending on what the vote is. Uh, OK, so, um, hang on, I just got to... Well, there we go. Right, now, if you want to get in touch, the best way to get in touch is by the web chat. So if you um, go to our website, www.sewingquarter.com, uh, there you go. You click on Watch Today's Show. And then you scroll down. You see there on the right-hand side, Message to Studio. Uh, just send your questions in there. Say hello. Hello. Uh, but keep it to one and a half sentences because it cuts you off otherwise. At your end, you think you can still type. But at our end, it just cuts you off. So keep it short. Keep it squirt. I was Hannah up there with you today. Uh, anyway, while we're on the website, let's scroll down. You see all of those there, the what I had things I had yesterday. In a momento, all of those will disappear. And you will see as I introduce items today, books or fabrics or um, now that was the miss it miss out one. Oh now, oh now. Go just go back, go back, go back down. Somebody hasn't checked out their basket because yesterday the brown gerbra sold out. So somebody didn't check out the basket, so there must be some of that left. Gerbra. Gerbra. Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, all it is is, that, uh, as I introduce things, so if you come in later on, you think, well, what's John had today? Or if you're watching the repeat later, you can see what's there. Click on it and you pop it in your basket. Talk about popping it in your basket while we're doing the live show. At the right-hand side, next to the screen, there's a square there. Now, that was the Amy Butler soulmate uh, fat quarter there. Um, that was from yesterday. But as we do live shows, you'll see. And what you do is you click on it, you pop it in your basket. We've got an empty basket this morning because it's little Paul, not uh, Hannah. Um, make sure you check out. If you know you definitely want something, make sure you check out. Make sure you check out the basket um, because we only charge one p and for £2.95 for the whole day, for the whole day. And as you just saw it going past then, don't forget the sewing bee starts tomorrow. Starts tomorrow. I'm there on Friday. Uh, not as an official capacity, just swanning around. Um, Natasha, Rebecca Reed, and Jennifer Taylor are all there. Um, I don't know how Jennifer Taylor's going to do it because she's on. She's doing Sewing Quarter, Simply Sewing Magazine, and the Great uh, British Sewing Bee Challenge. So she's and you look at the timetable and she's everywhere all the time. She's not there tomorrow. She's only there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, anyway, 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 uh, you can also email. Send in your pictures. We love getting your pictures. Or if you want to send in a longer message, you can do, and that is studio at sewingquarter.com. Studio at sewingquarter.com. Right. Last week... What block were you doing last week? Oh, the snail trail. And, and we cut two out, and I saw also the other one was with Lucy and everything. But I held up the whole show because we only had one sewing machine. So today... Two sewing machines, two blocks. Now, what they did in scheduling, they went, oh, don't worry, John, we'll give you a really, really, really easy one to do, right? Bird of Paradise, right? Now, even Lucy, and I'm sure she won't mind me saying, yesterday afternoon she was prepping this one up for today's show, even she made loads of mistakes, so this first hour could be a nightmare because Lucy's going to tell you how to make the block and then we're both going to make one, Right? That's lovely, isn't it? Bird of Paradise, it's called. I've got no idea why either. But it's called Bird of Paradise. Right, OK. Uh, we've done bundles. We, we have done bundles. This is confetti. This, this is the one that Lucy's made... <coughs> excuse me. ..and that we are going to make during the show today. Uh, what you get here is half a metre of each fabric. This is brand new. We're, we're, this fabric, we only launched it this week. We only launched it this week, £19.45, pence for one and a half metres of the Fabrico. OK, next. 
I'm presuming this one's Berry. This one's Berry. You've got the linear. Oh, sorry, I've got a big cough coming up. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologise. Uh, so you've got the linear print there, and then you've got two spectrum solids. So I'm thinking the linear is azalea, and then the other two look like uh, mercury and damson. Nice, 11.45 .40, for a metre and a half fabric. Vintage. So this one, you get two spectrum solids and a linear again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, what do we... Oh, it's vintage chintz, not just vintage. Vintage chintz, this one. Uh, £11.45 for a metre and a half of fabric. Really lovely. Then I've got... Um, now, I think this one must be called Mauve Mist. Mauve Mist. Then you get, a, so you get half a metre of the most mist, you get half a metre of the silver spot on and half a metre of the linear print in ebony. 12.95. And then last but not least, we've got, is it either flame or autumnal? It's one of the two. Autumn days, this one's called. Autumn days. Linear print in the orange, you get the, um, you get the, uh, not paprika, papaya spot. And then you get that lovely, uh, oh, it's grenadine, is it? No, no, that's the grenadine. Yeah, I was talking about the spot. And then what's that one? Port, I thought it was. Right. And this is the book. This is... This is the... Um... This is the book that the block comes from. It's a fantastic book. Now, yesterday we had the thousand flower block. Today we've got the flat, a thousand any quilt block. There's all sorts, there's nine patch, there's four patch, there's piecing, there's applique, there's foundation piecing. And you get a, you get a CD-ROM. There's a thousand, right? You get a CD-ROM. What you do is you think, oh, which one do I want? Oh, I'll do that heart one there. You look that heart one up on the, C, on the CD-ROM. You think, what size do I want in? I want it in eight inches. So you then click on it. You print it up and it brings up the pattern. There's no instructions in the book, but all the patterns and the templates that you need are all there too. £21.95. A thousand blocks, though. A thousand blocks in any size you like. Right. I thought you haven't got any shoes on there. <laughs> Morning. Morning. <laughs> it's a lovely block. It's gorgeous, it? but it's difficult, isn't it? Well, it's not really. I mean, it is fairly straightforward. I was just having issues yesterday. Issues? <laughs> issues, yes. We've all got issues. Do you want to share them? <laughs> right. So it's made up. We're going to have fun, aren't we? Yeah, right. Oh, right, OK. This There's, is one I cut out late last yeah, night. That's so one, there. Yeah, that's the one. Right, OK. So it's made up of... It's a base... It's a nine-patch block. Yes. We can so, see one... Yes. Just wait. Nine patch block, three across, three down, as you can see. And now, that's not a flying goose. No, it isn't. You see, no. I thought it was a flying goose, but it's not. No. He said, you made that block the other day. I said, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. It's different. So, you, it's made up of four patches. So, you've got five, four patches. Yes. And then this section is made up of two half square no. rectangles. Uh, half square rectangles? That's, what that's not what they're called. It is. Oh. So, um... They're called half triangle rectangles, aren't they? N no. OK. Wait. But that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. That should be called square. Anyway, well, that's no. what it's called. So, two I of those. I know she's the expert. I do apologise. Two of those. OK? Yes. So, um... You can use the templates in the book. Yes. I didn't. Right. I thought, let's make it a bit easier yes. on ourselves. Yes. So, I'm using a Creative Grids, um, ruler. Similarly, how I did yesterday. Right, okay. Which to one do all are the you cutting? Because it, it makes it much quicker. So this one is the um Twin two, Peaks. Two peaks. Two peaks in, in one six inch triangle. Let's have a look at it then. Well. Look, can you see that there? So uh, like right. The, now like yesterday's, it's got lots of instructions on it, hasn't yes. it? Yes, and I'll so it's it not down. just a six inch, you can create all different sizes <clears> with it. Oh, okay. So, got all the measurements um, on there so it tells you the finish size of the triangle that's so in black. including the seam allowance <coughs> yeah sorry and it tells you what width of strip you need to cut oh okay um in order to get that finished size yes. so it takes some of the quilt maths away oh so you can cut from you that shape yes. or you can cut 
What would you, would you cut? No, that, this shape. No, you can't do no, that one. Yesterday it, it, you could do that one, couldn't you? Mm. On the well, one yesterday. I mean, no, you can't. No, no. OK. Well, I mean, you, I yes, suppose you, you could, but... Anyway. But it's not, it's not, it's not designed for that. It's not going to give you the different measurements. Okay. This one is, so this way, or... Oh, I see, way. I see, So I see, you're I just see, turning yes, it round. Yeah. And again, it's got that nice um, curved section so you can get your rotary cutter. Yes. Um, How much is this? How much is it? £20.95. It's brilliant, isn't it? Well, it, what's really nice, because you can make, like, star blocks. Yes. Like that. So anything where you want a triangle in a square. Yeah. And then also you've got the rectangles there as well. And that one as well. Yes, the same thing. That's the so same that's okay. as that? Yeah, it's just one of those in... Oh, OK. ..in the block. But what I love about these is, um, with some of the um, tools are designed to make specific blocks or specific shapes... Yes, and they might like the log cabin one. Yeah, exactly, like the log cabin. And then some of them, you've got variations. And there are, then there are ones like this, where it, it gives you a guide of what you can use it for, but there are so many blocks that are made up with these shapes... Of course. ..that this is a really useful tool to have to make your cutting quicker... Have you got that one shapes. at home? This is mine. Like the one yesterday was yes, yours. This is mine. On permanent loan. Yes. Um, and remember, with all uh, Rachel Ruler Creative Grid rulers, you do get all the instructions and everything on there. It's like a little bit... Really, really lovely, isn't it? Right, OK, let's and if, start. And, you know, if you're making a lot of block, You know, a lot of these blocks here, look, you need that... Rep yes. You know, you need the shapes there. So <coughs> you'll, you'll find it repeated in a lot of the different um, blocks. So that's why it's useful yes. to have yes. these tools. OK. So this white one here is how... So if you want a finished... How did you know what size finished what, what things you wanted? I broke it up again in the same way I did yesterday. So if you look at the block... This one is a 12-inch block. Have to have a think about it then. Right. So um, each section you can break it down. So two, four, six, eight. No, that's not right, is it? <laughs> two, two, four, four six, six, eight, eight ten, ten, twelve. Twelve. Yeah. There we go. So they're but they're four inches, aren't they? Yes. Each of the squares are finished four inches. Yes. So you have to add a half an inch to anything yes. in order to get. So the little squares are cut at two and a half yes. inches to make up that block of yes, four and a half. Yes, because they'll end up being two inches. Yes. Yeah. So we want this one to be four and a half by two and a half. To give you a four by two. To give you a four by two. Yeah. Yes. So I just broke it down like that. And so then I can refer to this. You know, I want it to be finished yes. at four yeah. and then... So I'm cutting four uh, and Somebody's asked why it's called confetti. This fabric name here, this grey fabric here, that's actually called confetti. The design of that fabric there, the grey, is called confetti. Right, OK. So let's start the chopping out. Don't forget, if you've got any messages, of, uh, even though I've got... Oh, there's loads of messages coming in. Let's have them, then. Marcia, morning, lovely John and Lucy. Love the shirt. Is it new? No, it's ancient. It's ancient, but do you know what? I bumped into a friend of mine at the doctor's. I had my flu jab two days ago. And she went, oh, you've lost some weight. You've lost some weight. And I said, I haven't. I weighed myself in the bathroom and exactly the same weight as I was, right? But all these old shirts, which I haven't been able to get into for years, all fit me now. So mm. something's happening. It's getting muscly, maybe. It's not muscle. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Marcia. Uh, Anne in Anglesey. Uh, quick question, John. How many shirts have you got? Um, oh, now. Is that your surname? Oh. Um, I did have over 200. Then I gave 150 to charity. Then... Uh, yeah, then they gave them back. They didn't want them, Paul says. Cheeky. <laughs> then, when we made our block... Oh, we forgot to ask Rebecca Reed about our block. I'll try and do it in, in the show today. Um, I cut up nine of them for my um, mm. block that we're doing, the sewing quarter block. And then that's... So I'm going to get some more soon. Lorraine says, glad you're feeling better. I've started doing more blocks, has got new cutting die machine. Lots of love, Lorraine. Oh, I hope it's the nice. Sizzix from us, Lorraine. Anyway, right, carry on, carry on, carry on. OK, so you want to cut your strips whatever um, size you're going to yeah, be Yeah, what using. size did you go to, then? Um, this one is a four and a half inch strip. Cos you want the finished block to be four inches. So then... And then you're going to just keep cutting and turning, cutting yes. and turning. Yes. Okay. OK. So you've squared that fabric off, have you, already? Yes. So how come I've cut mine out and you haven't cut yours out? I have, though. Oh, OK. I'm just going to sh show how to okay. do it. <laughs> You're a bit behind, then. No. So it's just as easy as that. Yeah. And you're just spinning it round and cutting as I'm you go along. Spinning it round, get out of my way. So you can see, if, I'd had, if I had a bigger strip, 
you know, that I was starting wider, down maybe. here. Sorry, yes, wider. Then as you're going, you get right to the edge of it. That's yes. what that groove is for yeah. there. And then um, you also can cut your triangles like that. And what's nice is it gets rid of that um, dog ear. Oh, so we haven't got any dog ears on them or anything? No, and I'll show you. They have just watch out and cutting. Oh, this sorry. Way. That's okay. So just so you know, just so you know, we don't um, advise you to cut towards yourself. It's only that we're restricted in time and shape here. So then what it suggests you do is line up that edge and then you can just cut, the, trim the corner. Oh, wow. So it does your dog ears for you. So it does your dog ears for you. Oh, fantastic. So that's really nice. So yeah. you're not having to worry about, you know, yes. where things are going or um, whatever. Okay. So you're cutting out lots of those yes and then you can sew them together so then we lay out is that the next thing so we've got we'll lay it out oh we need the picture yeah we need the picture <laughs> <laughs> what page is that on oh, is it where that little yellow thing is yes so in for where the it? it's that one there oh yes sure. Yes, yes. so we were having a play, weren't we, with these? Yes. Um, oh, yes. So the one that we're going to lay out isn't your traditional oh, well, bird not. of paradise because we're changing the colour. Right. So, so this yes. is your traditional bird of paradise with the two different colours going one diagonally that way and one diagonally yeah. that way. And it's a bird of paradise like the flower coming out. Yes. Like that. Like it's not a bird, bird it's no, a flower. No, it's a flower. So it's like the bird of paradise. OK. Flower. So traditionally so what, what it's done with those colours. Yeah, so that's traditionally how you do it. Which way are we doing We're it? We're going then? to do it... So the blue um, squares are going in the corners, one in each corner, and then... Now, it's a directional fabric. You can either do them all in the same direction or I'm doing mine all different. OK. Right, OK, so I've done my four in and the then, corner. And then our whole um, flower section is going to be black. Yeah. So we're just going to do it that that's black. I'm laying it out, ready to sew. And what you want to do when you're cutting your strip, yeah. you're going to get mirror images. Can you see? Because you don't want... Um, that the wrong way. Oh, see, it started know, already. It started. Because um, <clears throat> you need them going both directions, so you need one cutting, you know, you yeah. need them a mirror of each other. Pauline says, way. clothes fitting, no weight loss, you've just rearranged the distribu distribution of weight. Yeah, I've got very heavy feet, <laughs> Pauline. <laughs> After you what? Why? No, 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 we're not, you're not listening. We're not doing this one. Thank you. My director's just saying you've done it wrong, John. Your colours, your, all your cut. we just said, we're not doing it the <laughs> traditional way, we're doing it the other way. Right, OK, now hang on. So this is the centre square. OK, so you do need to concentrate for this bit. I had a couple of didn't Yes, thank you, Michael. I have to concentrate for this bit. Yeah, you have to concentrate. Um, but you can, it is quite fun playing about with the... I'm all right, um, look, I know what I'm doing. ...directions. No, because you have to fill the blocks, Paul. You can't just leave it like that. Uh... And we did debate, didn't we, having a central square versus yes. having um, patchwork. But, I but thought why we'd... did we choose against that, then? I'm, I'm, I don't really remember. But... No, I know why we, d we decided, because we thought that it might look a bit odd if we've got a square in the middle of all the same fabric. But if you do the confetti going in all different directions, then it works, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, hang on, I've not done this right. So it is like a bit of a puzzle. Yeah, we're getting there though. Yeah. And this is where I hope that oh. I'll cut all the right what number of pieces. Well, I know I have, so I'm all right. <laughs> right, so that's the top, my top line's like that, my middle line's like that. Let's pull that one down. It's gone very quiet while we're concentrating, yeah, isn't it? Like that. There we go. And oh yeah, but shit. It's not a race. <coughs> no, it's we have not to be, a race. It's not a race. Why what? What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, there we go. 
There we go. No, no, that's wrong. That's wrong, John. So it won't look like it will fit together when you lay it out like that, because obviously you've got to put all the component parts together. Yeah. This is the confetti bundle, remember? Uh, you know what we should have done is I should have done mine the opposite way round to you. I think it's a nicer comparison if we do. Which is, yeah, we're making the same thing. We are making the same thing. No, because if you, fit, if you flip the pink and dark, then this is the wrong colour. This needs to be pink if you flip the pink and dark. There you go. There's lots of gaps because they're the seams, Paul. This is what happens when your producer has no <laughs> idea about um, sewing. Right, OK, go. so now you need to check your... Are you doing just random? I've just quite done it quite random. So I've got those going that way and those going yeah. up and down. And you can, you know, you can have a play, move them about, have them going yeah, in different directions. Move. And when you do that, it does give a completely different look to the, to the block as well. So having, say, the corner pieces going sideways yeah. does look very different from having it going okay. that way. So now, are we doing columns or are we doing rows? I would break it down into patches. So I'll do the nine, you know. The nine patches. Do your nine so the nine patches. patches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's it. So now, are we going to chain piece? Um, we can do a bit of chain piecing, yes. Okay. I think after my. Um, yeah. I'm not going to do chain yesterday. piecing. I might not do chain piecing either. We'll no, no, because Lucy did chain piecing in prep yesterday and got it completely I got, wrong. I got and, very muddled. And up. then the uh, marketing... No, is it the marketing department arrived saying, oh, can we just take pictures of you, Lucy? She went, not while I'm unpicking your cards. <laughs> right, OK. So we're there. So you, would you do that? Would you do... Yes. All... So we'll start... We can do a row okay. at a time. So if we do the four patch first... So, like, I would chain piece these because you're just going to sew the top row together and the bottom yeah. row together, so you can do those at the same time. So, um, you've set your machine for a quarter of an inch, and we're both using our quarter-inch feet, aren't we, today? Yeah. So, you can pin if you want to. Do oh, you now, you said you'd set this to a quarter-inch seam. This is not on a quarter-inch it seam. Gone, it's gone off, hasn't it? Somebody turned it off and on again. It is now. <laughs> Someone's sabotaging my thing already. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> How very dare they. You ready? I'm ready, I'm off. OK. Now, when do we do pressing? Um, you can do it as you're going along. If I'm working with small pieces like this, I'm, I'm OK just finger-pressing and then... Yeah. You know, give it a press after we've sewn it together. It's not me beeping, mine's no, fine. No, that's my machine. Mine's not happy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> What's the matter, Lucy? I don't know, it's not happy. Mine's fine, yeah. No. Do you, need, do you need some help? Mine's trying to... I think it's not cut it. I'll just cut it off and see if that works. Well, I'm just racing ahead with my chain piece in. I don't know what all the fuss is about, you know. It's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on now. Oh! What's wrong this with you? Is, <laughs> I shouldn't do live. Is it your direction? Yeah. Those are the kinds no, of no, things... No, no, I've got it, got it, got it, got it. Have you got it? Have we got a quick and pick, just in case? Yes, we have there. Okay. Should you need it. Oh. I'm only checking because you might floor. need it, that's all. Yeah, I might, I might very well need it. Right. Oh, no, hang on, this has got a thingy in it, hasn't it? Yes, that's what's just not been happy oh, on mine. Not, I, oh, you Oh! Nothing. Just... No, well, I, it's not... I'm going to have to have a play with that because okay. it's not happy at the moment. So yeah. you can just finger press those seams and do one seam going one way and one going the other. OK. OK, so... Oh, that's not very good. You've got good. them going in different no, directions. That one's not very good, that one. Why? What's wrong with it? Nothing. 
I might undo that one. <laughs> well, what happened? Nothing. Well, it might be useful for people. No? Is your seam just a bit off? My seam? Not that one, that one. Oh, right. Oh, you've done it going down. Have I not supposed to? No, it doesn't matter. It's going to get. It's going to go together the same way, isn't it? I've got, you see, I've, this is the mistake I've made. Where's so that one? one doesn't go there. No, that one doesn't go there. That one goes there. There you go. That's why I think it's always useful to refer back to this the This is why I should have picture. taken a picture. And you can take a picture. I very often will take a picture on my phone so that I can refer back to it. Am I in the right? That one's wrong, you see. That Especially one's if I've wrong. got direct, directional, you know, fabric. So then you need to sew those Two sections together. together. So you want one seam going one way, one going oh, the I've, other way. Oh, and I haven't pressed it. Because they're quite small pieces, I think a finger press is yeah. sufficient. But one's got to go one way and one's got to go the other way. Yeah, it's just, it's easier to, to match them up that way. Nestle. Nestle and pin. Nearly halfway through the show and we've only done one block, look. I've got to try and get my machine to work now. Do you want to use this one? It's not happy. I'll just oh. try and have a go. Oh, there's no, oh, there's the bin. I can do this because it's my machine, you see. <laughs> Someone said it's like watching Laurel and Hardy when they did the I wallpaper. Know. That's terrible. We concentrate. We're taking it too Although seriously, I... though. We're concentrating. There's nothing stuck, so I don't know why it's not happy with me. Do you need some help? Well, I might just have to. Maybe if I turn it off and turn it on again, that yeah, sometimes works, nice. doesn't it? Oh, well, now I've lost my bobbin. <laughs> Would you like to use my machine while I go and do the fa Oh, no, mine's gone wrong. What's gone wrong? I think I might have cut these out wrong. One's a bit bigger than the other. <laughs> what? Why, what's wrong? I'll go and do fabric. Did you pin? Yeah, I did pin. You, you do that, you? you do that. I'll do okay. this then. OK, this is the confetti one. <laughs> It's nice, isn't it? You get the three fabrics there, £19.45. pence, A half a metre of each. OK, next. Uh, next one is uh, Berry. This is this one here. You get the linear, you get the... Oh, no, hang on, is it called linear? Yeah, yeah, linear. It is called uh, Berry, this one. Uh, you get half a metre of the linear, half a metre of the grey, half a metre of the pink there, £11.45. pence. Next one is the Vintage Chintz. And in that one, you get pink, blue and the linear uh, vanilla. You don't have to worry about the colours because uh, we just get, you get them automatically anyway. So that's that one. Then we move over and this is Mauve Mist with ebony and silver. You get a spot on one in this one and a uh, linear print one. Right? Oh, it's lovely, isn't it, that one? That's gorgeous. Uh, how much is that one then? Twelve ninety-five. Lots of people got that one in their basket. Please check out. Uh, yeah. Now I'm going to. Um, I'm just saying about the the ironing. Jade ironed these. Just so you know, before he went home yesterday, but he was in a rush because he was getting a lot. He was going off to Liverpool. He's gone off to Liverpool. Planning his weekend in Liverpool. He's staying in a hotel. No, no, he's here till like half past five. Right. And then last but not least, we've got... Oh, that one there, Autumn Days. Autumn Days, £12.95. The book as well, remember, that we're using. A thousand any size quilt blocks. Have you not got a picture of it? There it is. It literally says what it does on the tin, right? It's, there are a thousand different blocks in there. And what you do is you get a CD-ROM inside. You put the CD-ROM in your CD-ROM player. What do they go in? <laughs> Computer. Choose which block you want on what page. Choose what size you want it. Press the button. It comes out your printer. I don't know if it's that easy. Um, you press the printer and it prints up the block for you, the pattern for you, the templates for you. And then there's no instructions... 
Well, I'll do this again now. So you need to, you do need to, you know, have an understanding of piecing to, yes. to be able to to use the book. Um, but it's great inspiration. You've got so many blocks in there, and um, it's really nice to be able to have it in in different sizes and to be able to make them to the size you want as well. Because it might be you want to add it. Um, you know, to a project you're already working on, yeah. you just want a different block. And it's a good way, you know, uh, creating different um, blocks and working with different shapes is a really good way of building your skills as well. So it's nice to have that. How are you getting on, John? Fine. I was being a bit cocky doing the chain piecing, I felt, I feel. Right. Sometimes it's better just to take things slow and do <clears throat> one section at a time. Yes. And chain piecing isn't for everybody. You well, know, no, I've done it before, but it's just not under the pressure of no. doing it. Also, no. I'm not used to finger pressing either. Well, you press with an iron then, that's fine. Oh, you uh, yeah, like when we're going to get the iron yeah, out I know, now. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'll be told off for arguing with the guest. <laughs> You're not arguing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not an argument if I'm winning. You always win. There was loads of messages coming through. Paul, I was on that one. On the Pauline one. Oh, I will just say, I turned the machine off and on again and it's fine. OK. Uh, Linda, best show ever. Loving these two. John using a machine, hurrah. And learning to sew is fun, not fear. Thank you both. Both Aww. lots of love, Linda. Thank you, Linda, my lovely. That's a nice motto, isn't it? Learning to sew is fun, not fear. Yep. Next one. Now I've still got Linda's. I've got Barbara's. Barbara and Bob. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Barbara. <laughs> you could have warned me. It's a good job it's not a race. Don't use my name. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Stella. Uh, where's Margaret's, then? <laughs> oh, no, I do a post. Amanda, John, you're... Jan, your chuckle... Jan? <laughs> it was Jan. John, your chuckle does make me smile. Oh, that was supposed to be one for Margaret there. Oh, it? you are funny. Where's Margaret then? What does Margaret say? Morning, John and Lucy. Love watching you both. Thank you, everybody. You see, that's spot on, right, isn't it? But when I sew it, it moves. OK. What's um, the, what am I doing wrong? Uh, Let's do it on your machine. So now can, we can show, because they can't see on my... Oh, do right, yours, yes, do okay. yours, do yours, do okay. yours. Right, so this is one where I'm sewing two lots of two together. Yes. I've put the seams going in different directions, so they've nestled, mm -hmm. and the pin's gone through that side and that side, right? But then when I come to sew it, it moves. So how do I stop that? Well, I put a pin in diagonally. I don't put okay. pins in like that. Let's go for a finer pin. Let's go for a finer pin. We were supposed to have sorted these out, these pin cushions. So you do diagonally like I that. I do diagonally like that, so it's not getting in the way as yeah. I'm sewing. And I'll just move it. Because that is where you want it pinned, you know, on about, at about where your seam yeah. is, go is going to be. I forgot this one's got a camera on it. OK, now, just as Stop. you're getting up to here, yeah. you want to check that that bit's folded under. Right, OK. Yeah, because if that moves back, sometimes that can yeah. distort your seam as well. OK. And do you leave your pin there or do you take it yeah, out? I'd, I personally leave it in. You should always take them out. OK. If you've got a, you know, if you've got a very fine pin and it's not going to get in the way... Yeah. You, well, you when, I okay. did, when I learned, we used to leave the pins in all the time. Yeah. Thank you. Do a reveal. <laughs> Perfect. How did you get on? Lovely. OK. Good. So that... <laughs> so that method works. That method works. So let's just put these two together. It's not a race. Making a, du making a duvet. No, making it's a... not a race. <laughs> so it might well have been... You know, it could have been your pin got in the way and, and pushed and moved your fabric yeah. when, you, when you were doing the other one before. Yes. Just think, when we go live 24 hours, we'll be able to make a whole quilt, won't we? In a day, quilt in a day. Do what, what? A quilt in a day. Yeah. It's, doa it's I doable. Think... I was going to say, when We'd do we get our lunch, We'd be very tired, wouldn't we? After, yeah. <laughs> after that. Especially when we do four days in a row like I'm doing this week. 
OK, so do you want to finish the one that you're doing and then we'll move on to oh, the... Oh, sorry. Uh, we'll move you know on what? to the rectangles. I could just, you could do the next show with the tools and I could just, just carry, carry on, on in the corner here, lovely, couldn't isn't I? It? Do you know, when I came from my first meeting about coming to work here, I, the way they described it to me was we would be here... It would be a bit like the news at 10. So we would be here making it. And then in the background here, there were lots of tables with ladies and gentlemen making quilts and everything. Like, you know, at the really? news where you can see the typists <laughs> in the background and everything like that. That's how it was sort what of What would they be making? A quilt. Oh, right. OK. And then I'd have a show the next day selling the quilts that they've made. Uh, Jill says, good morning from Portugal. Loving the show. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Jill. Oh, Portugal. Oh, no. Jill, which bit are you in? Because Paul and 29 of his <laughs> friends are on their way there on Friday. Where are you, where are you going, Paul? Alba Fira, you're not there, are you, Jill? Uh, morning, John and Lucy. I'm learning with new... I'm learning with you. Everything is so much fun. That's from Sandy in Cornwall. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sandy. I have to say, I think, look... Marvelous this is what I did good. on my own, right? I don't know why I'm so... I made costumes for blooming Kiri Takanawa and, like, all huge Hollywood stars. I don't know why I'm getting excited about a four Because cross. it is, because it's exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> Sheila, brilliant TV, love watching you both. Can we have the sizes of each small piece? Good luck, John. Uh, Sheila, it's a four-inch block finished. So this was a two-and-a-half-inch strip and you cut two-and-a-half-inch squares. squares. This one here was a two-and-a-half-inch strip... But it's a four inch, four and a half inch, inch triangle, so you get a four inch finish, four by two finish block in that one, and that was it, wasn't it? That's, that's it. Yeah. Only so sizes. it's just, it's really simple in that it's just those two shapes. The only bit that's complicated is making sure you sew it together right, <laughs> in the right way. Um, good morning, John and Lucy. I love the show. We got to say this is the best ever yet. That's of <laughs> Jane. Thank you, <laughs> Thank Jane. You, Jane. Right, okay. Well, you see, we should have made this a two hour special, really, shouldn't we? Yeah, because I, really? I don't think because, we're going to get it all well, done only, only because it's 22 oh, well, already. Well, let's, let's get on with oh, it then. So you do all your um, four patches <laughs> and then you were doing fabric. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, then... So I'll just do one row. If you do, I'll just put, okay. let me move that to one side. Oh, all right. Oh, shame. Right. So I'll do one row. I'll do one row. So ne next okay. we've got the triangles, haven't we? So when we were cutting out these triangles, because we've used um, the tool, yes. you can see it's cut off those dog ear sections. Yes. So what that means is... Technically, hopefully, we shouldn't be having to trim anything okay, once yes. they're set And also, together, we, when, you've got the, it right. when you've got it going to a point, it's very difficult to know where to start and finish it's the seam, It's very difficult it? to know. So you're just going to line that up and you're going to sew from point to point. Wait, 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 wait. Have I done this? So you line that bit up yeah, there. there. Oh, no. Oh, I've not... I must have not... You didn't cut you, the corner. No, that's, oh, no, I, that's, I did this one. So you didn't trim the corner I didn't the trim the corner. corner You'll properly. be all right. Just, all right. just but go you can, for it. So you can match this end here, yeah. because the because of the um, the ruler, you see how the end is cut off, so you can match there and match all the way. What I didn't do was I didn't cut off that corner. It was very late last night when yeah. I was doing that. I would just move it down a tiny bit so you're getting it right down. There, like that. Okay. So you sew it. Now, control. this is the bit you have to be careful because this is on the bias, isn't it? Now, this bit. Yes, it is. So you you do need to be careful. And you could, you know, you could pin if you wanted. You could you what? Want, you could pin. Oh. If you wanted to pin. Yeah. Just if you were worried about. It's the weird, bias. isn't it? Because you lot make you and the ladies make this look so easy. Oh, mine's. <laughs> I haven't made a mess of it, Paul. Me. Thank you very much indeed. No, you jinxed me, Do you know what, next though, time... Mine did. Next time, we'll get little Paul down here and he can make one as oh, well. Oh, that would be fun. I'll produce. He made a lovely block. He could do it. He did. Oh, in fact, in um, TK Maxx, they're selling... Um, you know the skull you did your, your block of? They're selling those skulls in... Um, that's, that sounds a bit morbid. Oh, uh, Paul did... You know those can... Oh, what? Mexican Mexican sugar skull, you know, the brightly coloured um, things like that. He made one of those as his block and it they're selling them. Okay. Well, in my local TK Maxx, they are. Any more messages while we're doing this? Oh, some emails. Josephine Carroll, thank you for your message. Barbara, Lorraine. I don't know what they're messages are, she's not reading them out, but thank you for your messages. Um, you don't what? What did, you, what did he say? 
I can't hear him, okay. John. So Is it just me? I have no idea. <laughs> He's saying check out your baskets, they just want anyone to miss out. Now I've got to put it back in the right place. There we go. <laughs> What's wrong? How's that going? That's good. That's okay. <laughs> What's wrong with that one? That I sewed it where it you pinned lost it. it. Yeah, no, it's okay because that's going to end up in your seam allowance anyway. That looks. See, she's sab there. you're sabotaging mine, aren't you? <laughs> I am not. Little Paul's overwhelmed with emotion upstairs. Oh dear. Either that or he's got indigestion. Oh no. Uh, that's because it's on... Oh, did you put my machine on snail? No. Or is it a turtle? It's a to tortoise. Did you know little Paul might not know this? Did you know in your garden, snails and slugs, only, like, a minor percentage of them are above the ground? So in an average-sized garden, there's, like, 50,000 um, snails no. and slugs. No. Yeah. Oh, that's Oh, horrible. that one's better. Is that better? It was on Radio 2... No, I'll tell you who it was. There's a new shopping channel. I know we're not supposed to talk about the shopping channels, but they don't sell sewing things, so it's all right. Um, there's a new shopping channel opened, and Rula Lenska's one of the presenters. Do you know who Rula Lenska is? No, sorry. Hannah didn't know who she was, either. She's a famous actress, Rula Lenska. Anyway, she's doing gardening. She's doing the gardening. Hello, John oh, and Lucy. Brilliant nice. show. I learned so much from Lucy and John. <laughs> you start my day off smiling. <laughs> love, Anne in Plymouth. Thank you, Anne, my lovely. Right, uh, hang on, what okay. are you doing? Okay, oh. so I'm just keep sewing, but d you want to sew these together. Yeah. And it's the same, where you've got the, you can press... Right, that's my next question. To either side. I would press these first. Right. So but you can, which if you way want, would you press the press them in opposite one? ways. Right, so that, on this one, so you, what, that one you'd press, let me turn it yes. over. So that one you'd press that way and that one you'd press that way. So that one, I have to think about it now. Yeah, that one to that side and that one to that side. Right. Like that. So I'm just going to finger press them for now. Yes. But I'm stretching it a little bit. And then you advice. can, yes, you need to be careful. And that's why, it, you know, if you are pressing with an iron, you need to be very careful right. because you can, you know, distort. So them now, how do I, because I need that yeah. point to be dead on at the bottom, don't yes. I? Yes. So if you've pressed them in opposite directions, yeah. then you should be able to. <clears throat> oh, no, hang on. No. Sorry, that, other way. Yes, other way. <laughs> so that one goes that way, and, and that, that one, one goes that way. that way. And then you can do the same thing where you just nestle them up. If you've got them going the same way, you still can do it. You just want to fold it back and check yeah. that you've got... But how do you make sure... That point meeting. That, oh, there you go. Yeah. So, so the so same thing, put your fine pin. Yes. What are you looking for? She's nicked my pin now as well. You throw them about, you do. Rachel, I just love you two together. You both have put my morning onto a good start. Oh, oh Rachel, lovely. thank you. So One from Helen. Who would have thought that watching people so <laughs> would be such fun? <laughs> now, oh, Helen! Now, is that biscuit tin, Helen? There's your pin. Yesterday, Paul, I meant to tell you in prep, I've completely forgot. Uh, yesterday, we had lots of people sending in pictures, and then Hannah said to me, oh, I've had a picture from Helen, I'm not quite sure what it's about. Left it at that. I didn't know what it was about. And then Helen messaged in near the end of the show. So oh, this is brilliant. That's brilliant. You've not shown the picture of my biscuit tin. And she sent in a picture of a biscuit tin. And I promised her we'd send, we'd show it today. So that Helen there, that's just sent that message in there, sent an email yesterday. She sent an email yesterday. Oh, it might be a different Helen. What do you mean she, she hasn't? <laughs> I'm sure it was Helen. Was it not Helen? I'm sorry, I don't Helen, know. Helen, was it not you with the biscuit tin? Maybe it's a different Helen. Helen definitely messaged in yesterday with the biscuit. Where do I put the pin Okay, on so I one? just follow the seam with that pin, or you could have it straight. It's, it's up to you. Thank you. He said, got no emails from anyone called Helen, he said. Right, went, oh, I found one from Helen. There you go. And then I like to put a pin just at the end as well. Sorry? Put a pin at the end. The far end? Yes. Oh, no, that, that's not right now, look, because that one... 
It's bigger than that. If one. it's a tiny bit, that'll go in the okay, seam allowance. Okay, Don't fine. worry about so it. We're not. I mean, really, you should be pressing these sections and trimming them as you go. Oh, OK, we're just, but we're not. We haven't got At the time. space or time. Uh, Gerardine, I just love to, you two. You make me laugh and smile. Lucy... Right, I don't understand this next bit from Gerardine. Lucy, you have a lot of patience when teaching John. <laughs> <laughs> love and hugs, Gerardine. <laughs> Little Paul says, try Thank producing you, Gerardine. me. Um, <laughs> Gerardine. That's nice, isn't it? Thought he was my friend. Oh, I'm friends with his mum, so that's the, that's. All. I am. We're really good friends, me and your mum. I am. We are. Barbara, aren't we friends? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound good. <laughs> okay, another tip. Yeah, go on. Shall I say I it found now? That pin now? Now you've done it. I think it was the machine. Start, that was don't me. start in the corner. Start. Oh, in. thank. Now you tell me. <laughs> Well, so sometimes the best ways to learn are just through trial and error. <laughs> what have you done with the quick unpick? Thank you. You're welcome. Well, because I was unpicking over there, wasn't I? <laughs> so don't start at the... You see, the thing is, though, that's a little tip that, if I hadn't done it, we might not have mentioned. Yeah, right. Yeah. So... And I think I do it now without thinking about it as well, so... Um, if is you it Thursday yet? If you start <laughs> in a little bit further... Yes. And then um, go forwards and then reverse. Do you see what I mean? So do a couple of little stitches, then go backwards and then forwards. So All right. Let's do this one again then. Because with things like this, because you've got that, you've, you know, you've just got that little bit there that can easily get eaten. Exactly. By um, your machine. Alison and Kent says, I love this collaborative sew. Which fine pins should I buy? These. Yes. Have you got those on your thingy, Paul? They're the little. They're lovely. They're now. They're not quilting pins. They're not. They're the not long. They're not long fat quilting pins. I would call these dressmaking pins. But when we do little squares like this, I think it's really important to have fine. Yeah. Especially if you're like me and you want to put the pins. Through. I always use well, fine needles and glass headed. Yes. Glass headed needles. Which these well. are. Yeah. Um, there they are. There they are. There they are. Paul's going to get the graphics for you now. But that's nice because if you're using two, you know, I, I. Don't I often sew without pins, but yes. I do, you know, where I need it, obviously, I, I do use pins, and so I don't want, you know, if you're using something too thick... I've done it again. What have you done? I, I take it away too quickly and it gets angry at me. Um, so... There, there's the pins. Yeah, I don't want... If you're using something too thick, you really could... You know, you need to be moving them out of yes. the way of, your, of yeah. your machine, but with the very, very fine ones, you know, you're not going to... Um, damage anything. <sighs> so I'm going to sew these together. There we go, I've got it. The pins in. Oh, there you go, 795. There they are. Add them to your order, especially with the next hour coming up. But that's the sort of little thing as well where. It's not threaded. Where if you. Um, you know, using the right tools just makes things that much easier and having a nice, fine pin um, means you can just get on with the sewing and not have to think about the pins too much. How are you doing? I'm just going to check, because it made a... It beeped at me just before I finished the yeah. end of the row. Oh, perfect, if I say so myself. <laughs> well done. Perfect. See, it's worth taking the time. It's it worth is. taking the time. Look, look at that point there. And what it is, is there's a quarter of an inch of the grey, because you're going to sew across the top of there, aren't you? The top of the point there. Paul's saying it's not perfect. He wouldn't know what perfect was. <laughs> he says perfection doesn't exist. Well, Paul. Oh, got more messages. Julie. Hello, John and Lucy. Great show as always. Can you wish me happy birthday? Happy birthday, Julie. Happy birthday, Julie. That's Julie from Worcestershire. Aww. Hope you're having a lovely day. Oh, you will have a lovely day. It's only nine o'clock, isn't it? Was, um, it, it was Joe's birthday yesterday. It was Yeah, it was Joe. You know, yeah. Joe, Joe Carter's was her birthday yesterday. I'm going to rock. I was going to roll back over in bed this morning and until <laughs> I remembered you two were on. And it's well worth it. That's from Beverly. Aww. Thank Hi, you, Beverly. Beverly. Um, and Karen says, good morning to my favourite dynamic duo. Going to have to catch up later as I'm off down my son's foot. Oh, and it's Karen's birthday as well today. Love you both, you make my day. Happy birthday, Karen. 
It's her son's oh, birthday. Oh, it's her son's birthday. Happy birthday, Karen. No, son. for my birthday. I'm down to my son's for my oh, birthday. Oh, for my birthday. I'm Thank not reading. Both you and Paul Happy got birthday, that wrong. Karen. <laughs> yes, he was wrong that time. He apologises. Fiona, morning, Lucy and John. Oh, a query. Can I not cut out the centre triangle using the other half of the two peaks ruler? Then there will be no middle C. Yes. What does that mean? So you you can use the ruler to cut out. Oh. That one. Okay. And why but didn't we? Well, because we're doing the. It, the traditional... Oh, OK. Oh, you mean you wouldn't have a seam down the middle? Oh, no, that's what that is, the middle, the middle seam. Yeah, so it would be like a flying goose, but yes. a triangle. Yes. I'm afraid I don't know what the name of that It could be is. a distorted flying goose, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so instead of Square having one. seams down the middle... Square goose. Uh, the good idea. Good idea, Fiona. I said, I said yeah. that about the square one in the middle as well, like that. Sorry. Right, OK, well, I'm ready to I'm, finish now. How many, oh, jeopardising got... my... <laughs> okay, I've only got a couple of minutes left with you, look. Okay. Right, okay, there's my row then. So then you're just no, sewing. There's my row. Yeah, so you're just going to sew those together. Okay. Okay. Now, oh, I, know, I still have to match that. Po so yes. my seam has to finish on that point, doesn't it? A quarter of an inch down from that just point. Just don't worry, just use. Just go I'm going this, I'm yeah, going this way, yeah. Just yeah. go with the edge. Okay. Again, just be careful because you've got bias. Right now, which way up would you? S oh no, it has to be that. But you've way, got no it? points. You've got no points matching there. No, you've got no one. points, but you've got lots of seam allowances, haven't you? So you'd push that seam allowance that way, would yeah, you? Yeah, and you can just. I mean, you can see from where you've cut. Sorry, that I'm one, not showing. Yeah. Where you've cut the edge off, that that's going to be your seam. You know. It was late when I was cutting these but out. But you last can night, just yeah. use your. Um, you can just use your quarter, you, you know, just rely on your quarter-inch foot. I'm not making excuses. When it's just a, I was trying to cut them out at home last night and Lucy was sending me pictures of the bath in her hotel room and everything. Because she, <laughs> she, she said, I've got to go soon. Cause I really... No, no, she wasn't in it. She wasn't in it. She wasn't in it. <laughs> she said, I've got to go now, John, because I want a hotel room with a bath in it. It's like, oh, OK, off you go. <sighs> so she went and then she sent me a picture of this bath and the bath must have been about... That long, must be. <laughs> We've can, been big enough for Paul. You can sit in it. That's all that matters. You can sit was in the bath. Was it the B-day? Was he getting confused <laughs> with the B-day? <laughs> don't think I'd fit in that. Um, <laughs> I've completely forgotten what I was going to say That's now. That's not... The water fountain in your bathroom. No, stop. Quarter-inch seam. When you're sewing the, the patches together, so long as you're consistent, you should be fine. Oh, you know, no, we have to finish. I'm just getting into off. this. Oh, no. I've not got that far either. The whole point of doing this was that, that we uh, we got a whole block <coughs> done. Right, I'm going to have to stop there and go and do the fabrics. OK, oh, well. It's no, I've done nearly... perfect. It's perfect, look. I've done more than Lucy. We're getting there. Right. Uh, you're back in an hour. You and now, don't worry, in an hour's time, she's making the table run normal. on her own. Back to normal. <laughs> back to normal. Well, she'll try to be on her own. I'll be standing there wittering on, but I won't be doing any sewing. Right, uh, Amy, you can clear the table now. Thank you. Right, this is confetti. This is the one we were using. This is the one that uh, Lucy made one of yesterday. £19. Now, Paul Little Paul's not seen this fabric because I only launched it this week. I only launched it this week. Confetti charcoal fabric bundle, metre and a half. Get half metre of each of the fabrics there. Now, they've called it confetti, but they're all based on flowers. The whole, the whole, that was like the seeds from a dandelion. They were obviously lovely little flowers. And we couldn't decide whether they were acorns. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at that one. If these were acorns or if they were dustpan and brushes or they were that game where you have a cup and a ball on a string. Oh. No, I said cocktail, but it's not called cocktail. It's called something flower. Anyway, that's that one. That's that one. Then we'll move on to a berry. Every time I show this one, Paul goes, oh, it's very nice, John. The old jokes are the best, aren't they? Right. Can you imagine 30 of them, like Paul, 30 men, boys like Paul on holiday in Portugal? £11.45, pence. So you get half a metre of the pink, half a metre of the grey and half a metre of the linear pink there. £11.45. pence. It's nice, that one. I like that one. It's very nice. Vintage chintz coming up next. Oh, that's right, that's still the berry fabric there. Uh, this is vintage chintz. This one, you get the pink and the blue, and then you get the linear vanilla. Always works well, this vintage um, look, collection, um, bundle. 
11 pounds and 45 pence. Oh, and also, I'll tell you a minute, 11.45, 11.45 that is. Um, thank you so much for all your messages on Facebook, but also on Facebook Live yesterday. We had so many people coming, it was really busy. I'm sorry if you didn't get through. Um, it's all gone now, but this is called Move Miss, this one. You've got Ebony uh, in the linear and you've got Silver in the spot on. Mauve Mist Fabric Bundle, £12.95. And, and last but not least, Autumnal. Is it Autumnal, this one? Uh, officially, it's autumn, I think, isn't it? I think so. Summer's finished, yeah. Autumn Days, this one. £12.90. I think summer finished in June, didn't it? £12. Mind you, yesterday was the most exquisite day when I eventually left it. It was the most beautiful day. £12.95 for that one. You get a spot on. Uh, it's grenadine, papaya and port, that one. Oh, that sounds like a nice drink, doesn't it? And then this one. A thousand any size quilt blocks. Thousands. £21.95. You get the CD ROM inside, but... Oh, oops, whoops. All... Oh. It's because the CD ROM's in the way. You get a thousand different... Designs, look. Each one, £21.95. Right, don't go anywhere. I'm back in three minutes from now, where I've got every item is under £100. No, under £15. Under £15. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. So I'm going to be showing you how to do a slip stitch, which is basically a hemming stitch that is almost invisible on both the right and the wrong sides of the fabric. So I'm going to go in through my layers here, through the single hem. I'm going to leave a tail before doing my double stitch here. So I'm just going to go through one, twice there. That's giving me my double stitch or locking stitch, ready to then do my slip stitch. Okay, so first of all, you need to take the smallest amount of fabric. So you want at least one or two pieces of thread in the fabric before then going into the fold of your single hem. And you're gonna run your needle through that fold before pulling it out. And then again, couple of stitches, bearing in mind I'm using a really big needle here because I'm using an embroidery thread, but you get the idea where you're just catching your material there, before again placing your needle in through the fold of your single hem. So you want to keep these as even as possible. my last stitch now. So here you can see that you can't really see the stitches from the back of the piece so this would be the back of the trouser leg the bit that you wouldn't see and then from the front you should only see very small stitches if not at all if you're using the right needle and thread. On Saturday the 23rd of September Joe Carter joins us for a dazzling quilt making demonstration that will help you create a masterpiece in just one weekend. This stunning K facet quilt is surprisingly easy to make and is ideal for beginners or experienced quilters looking for a quick project. You'll make massive savings on this kit, which contains so much gorgeous K facet fabric that you'll have plenty left over for other projects. With that in mind, the kit comes with a free copy of Kaif's brilliant little patchwork cushions and pillows, which is packed with ideas and inspiration. So give your home an injection of colour this autumn and create a future family heirloom that will be cherished for generations. That's Saturday the 23rd of September at 9am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78.
It was Joe's birthday yesterday. She's 40 yesterday. So when she's in at the weekend, do send her in a message. Show me Derek. Show me Derek. Derek's on on Friday and Saturday this week. So I'm on today and tomorrow. And then Derek's in Friday and Saturday. I'm going to the sewing bee tomorrow. I'm having Saturday off. And then uh, Sunday, I'm in. And Monday, I'm in. Oh, Monday's a big day as well. Monday's a huge day. Right. <laughs> now, where's the, where's the thing? Why not? Under £15. Is I should have John Scott's haberdashery store... Under £15, shouldn't I? Write that in the shift report, please. Right. Uh, basically, I've got to go fast and furious. I've got... Enough... Basically, everything can have two minutes each. That's it. Everything can have two minutes each. Some won't need two minutes, they might sell out. Some might need a little bit more, but we'll get there. 32 items. Right, this flies out every time we have this. It's brilliant. Everything... Everything this hour is under £15. It's well under £15, isn't it? Uh, freezer paper, you can use it for so many different things. But what we use it for is you can cut out a template. One side of the freezer paper has got, um, like, a waxy surface. It's not glue. It doesn't stay there. But you can iron it onto the fabric. You can then use it to draw around, sew around, or anything like that. Uh, uh, Mandy Shaw uses it loads. And then you rip away the freezer paper. You can use it again. You, you can use it over a, a few times. Um, but it can also be used to wrapping your sandwiches in. It can be doing for so many things, for applique, for patchwork, for English paper piecing, anything like that. This is brilliant. It's £4.95. pence. You get 12 metres of it. 12 metres of freezer paper. Now, at £4.95, we, uh, every time we get this in... Every time we get it... Look, there's a little drawing of what you can do it there. Every time we get it in, it flies out. It absolutely flies out. It's got that plastic coating on it, which doesn't glue it to your fabric, and it doesn't mark your fabric, but it just makes it adhere to it to a little while. There's no glue, so you can just peel it off, and there's nothing marked there. £4.95. Premier, Premier, Premier. You know, under £15 hour. Now, this... Uh, brand new... It's like a, a pressing cloth. It's a pressing cloth, but it's a goddess sheet. That's what they call it. £14.95. Um, now, it, nothing stays stuck to the goddess sheet. It's designed to be used with fusible fabrics and also suitable for all types of crafts. Think goddess sheet. Anytime you need a long-lasting, non-stick, transparent, high-heat tolerant, easy-to-clean surface, get your goddess out. It's lovely. There's little drawings on the other side here. Uh, have you had a look at the picture? Well, I, I'm going to open it then. I'll open Oh. It's not one of those things I need scissors to open it. Uh, anyway, don't worry, don't worry. It's like a, it's like a Teflon sheet, basically. It's a really, really... Basically, you just press over it so that none of the bond web, none of the glue, nothing like that goes on your iron. Won't stick to your, It won't stick to this at all. Uh, it's identical on both sides, so you can use it both ways. Um, now, uh, what else have they got? Uh, we, uh, uh, you can say so you can dedicate. They, they, what they do is they um, dedicate one side to iron only and the other side for fusibles. And you can do that by looking at the curve. There's a, I'll show you that. It's got a curve on it so you can decide which side you want. That's just another added bonus there. It's basically a fantastic pressing cloth for £14.95. Have a look at quick pictures. Brand new today. Premier, Premier, Premier. It's just like the tef it's just like the Teflon um, iron that we iron uh, cover that we have. Um, do you want to have a look at it? Sorry, sorry. Brand new. I just didn't. There we go. Look. You see. So it's like it's it's like you'd think you wouldn't be able to iron it. You see. So you, you must take that sticker off though. You must take that sticker off before you use it. Um, and it's just like, uh, it's just fantastic. And also, you know how I'm all saying with the Teflon, make a sandwich. So you put, if you're, if you're say you're ironing, oh, I know, say you're fixing that and you don't want to put it against your iron, you literally put it between the two, the heat goes through the cloth, nothing will go on your iron and nothing goes on your ironing board. £14.95, thank you. Have things under £15, remember? Right, now, next. This is fantastic, right? Oh! Drop my pins. Oh, I've dropped my pins. Never mind, I've got a magnetic pin cushion and I can do, for £4.45, I can do... this. Right, not only do you use it to pick them up, they can also just stay on there, that can be your pin cushion. But also, you can use it for... Um, uh, what do I use it for? Paper clips, drawing pins, anything like that. 
Four pounds and 45 pence. Little Paul saying you can reverse it. That's just the base of it there. It's just the top bit here that's magnetic. At four pounds and four... Now, this is brilliant because it... Uh, I know we're not supposed to be talking about Christmas and things like that, but this doesn't even have to be for sewers. If, you're, if your husband, your boyfriend, your partner has an office and he wants to keep, or she wants to keep, like I said, um, paper clips or anything like that, it's perfect. And what's more, if you've got paper clips, you can then do toys because they all, they all stand up like this and you can make shapes. OK, what is next? I've got a template set. This one. Now, I've not seen this before. Oh, that's why, right, because it's brand new. It's brand spanking new. Right, I remember it's under £15, £8.95. Right. Right, look, let's, oh. There you go, I've just got a mark on it. Uh, look, they're such simple shapes, but... Now, look, they'd be brilliant for any kind of quilting and anything like that. Look, I'll show you what the... Oh, look at the instructions. Look at all the different blocks that you can cut out using these templates. Be fantastic for a project, these, look. Oh, now, look, you see, they've got the one where you fold it over that one as well, look. It's brilliant, isn't it? Look. All different instructions. There's the different blocks you can use. Ohio. That one there, look. Ohio. Um, I like that one down there. That's nice, isn't it? So these are very simple, £8.95, but how often do you think, oh, I just need something to draw around? And they'll be laser edge, right? They're being prim. Let me see what it says on the, um, on the packet. Oh, it's all, uh, it's all in different languages. I can't understand. Template for 10 different designs, it's saying. Uh, what do you want to see, Michael? I'm just saying it's... Um, Normally says lays. I can't read it because it's in every language but English, I'm afraid, on that one. But look, they've got all the different shapes. Right, oh, let's move on. <laughs> What's next? Oh, look at these. They're so cute. Another premiere. Now, I, these would be fabulous as a gift, right? Because... Are you, what are you saying these for, John? There's only one. Well, watch. I'll be... Uh, how much is it? 3 95 Now, do you know what? Do you know what? Paul was saying this in prep earlier. You know you pay one post and packaging. You could buy one of everything that I show you in this hour and still only pay £2.95 post and packaging. That's brilliant, isn't it? Now, look at this. What we love about this is... You, it, look. Heart. Within a heart. Within a heart. Now, I think they look cute just like that. And you have them as storage. You could have your cotton wool balls or your cotton tips on your um, dressing table. But look, you could do lovely big uh, embroidery cross-stitching on there, couldn't you, to decorate them? How lovely are those? Never been on air before. They're £3.95. And you get all three. You get all three. And if you're not using them, you can just put them in each other like that. There you go. Oh, I don't know. I took the top of that one, didn't I? Took the top of that one. Too. There you go. Then that one. In fact, I didn't know I'd set it up. There you go. I did that totally the wrong way around, didn't I? Three pounds and 95 pence. Now, it feels like a raffia finish and a lovely big... Uh, if you want to do cross-stitching cross or any kind of a big embroidery, get your embroidery... Now, the embroidery threads are on the website. Go and go, get some embroidery threads. Go with this. Three ninety-five. Now, remember, remember, you know, at the beginning of the show, I always say to you, oh, um, the, here's today's list. As I show each of these pieces, it will appear down there, so if I'm going too fast for you, or if you just joined, you're thinking, oh, what else he had? As I go through them, they're listed. They're listed underneath me on the web there. Oh, hang on, textile markers next. Oh, you mean the, the colouring in? Colouring in, I'll just put that one away there. These are brilliant, I love these. Now, these are felt pens that you can draw on fabric with. They go there. You can draw on fabric with them. These are brilliant. Now, there's 20 colours, but you're getting, like, you're getting the equivalent of 40 pens because there's 20 colours, but at one end there's a fat end and one end there's a thin end. What you do is you can draw... You don't have to use this fabric, but you can draw on fabric, you can colour in fabric, uh, you let it dry, and then you iron the back of the fabric with a very, very, very hot iron, 
and then it's fixed. You can then wash it. It's washable then, 40 degree washable. They're, they're brilliant. So you don't have to do fabric that's already been printed. If you've got T-shirts, if you're going doing a, um, a, imagine you're doing a, a, like a hen party and you're putting names on girls' T-shirts or you're writing naughty slogans on people's T-shirts, things like that. These are brilliant because you put them on the T-shirt, iron the back, £12.95. There's 20 in there. But a fat end and a thin end. And they become fixed uh, when you've ironed them, it's fixed and you can wash them at 40 degrees. As long as the fabric's 40 degrees, obviously. No, you choose, you're the producer. I can't see it. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Now, this, now, this is a premiere to me. It's been on once before. And it's sold out, sold out, sold out, right? This is the lady that does the, um, the little uh, markers and things like that. What it is, is you know we're always showing you how to make a cover for your tablet, right? But if you make a fabric cover for your tablet, it won't do this, will it? This is mine, the one I use here. It won't stand up, will it? Because that's the cover, you see? And then you use that. Well, this, in this packet here, it's not the same as that one. I'll get it out of the packet for you. This one here... You slip it inside the uh, fabric one that you've made and it creates that. It creates so you can stand it up. Look. Have a look at the... Uh, look, 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 look. There's the... Um... So in there you get... There you go, you see? So look, look, look. Oh, these are very limited. These are very limited. £8.50. Right. Look. So you've got, they slide into the fabrics that you make there. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces you get in there. Very, very limited, very, very limited. There's two, two of that size. Yeah, there's two of that size there, look. They're brilliant. So that you, what you do is you make the fabric, well, all the instructions are here, look. You make the fabric shape of the cover for your, well, it, there's um, uh, like a tablet. There must be other things, because different sizes, aren't there? E-tablet and paper tablet keepers. OK. Moving on. Right, Taylor's hand. This is always really, really, really popular. No workroom should be without one of these, should they, really? If you've got to do sleeve heads, you know, shoulders, if you've got curved hems and everything... Is the iron... Oh, the iron's on, so I have to be a bit careful. Right? Right? £11 on the dot, this. If you need to press something round, a seam round, a curve, I tell you who loves this one. Jennifer Mills loves this. Very, very good for dressmaking. It's filled with sawdust. Uh, now, a lot of people worry about this because they're normally just covered in calico, like the back of that. Talking of calico, which is the 11 o'clock hour. Um, or a cotton drill. Uh, this also, the, the, people worry that the red will come out of that or the black will come out. It's fixed, it won't, don't worry. You can steam away. And because it's filled with sawdust, keeps its shape and also dries off nicely as well. £11. £11. Pounds. Right, the sleeve, this is a sleeve board um, ham, this one. So if you want to get inside the sleeve, or if you've got narrow jeans that you've hemmed, and you just slide them over there and iron it like that. I haven't got any slimline jeans here, I'm afraid. Um, oh, Mike's got some on. Take your jeans off, Mike, so I can just show them how to work, to work this. £7.45. Uh, they're ideal. Ab uh, brilliant for presents. Absolutely brilliant for presents. As I say, it's filled with sawdust, look, so it won't lose its shape. The sawdust will um, absorb the uh, steam, but then it dries out. It dries out nicely as well. A lovely shape. And also you can do a really good uh, head of a sleeve there. That, if you put that into the head of your sleeve and you want to press it round like that, £7.45. Right, now, I, I'm not going to do a full-on demonstration... Oh, full-on demonstration with this, but if you want to make any of your fabrics, like oilskin or waterproof... This is fabric. What, this is fabulous. This is fabulous. What you do for fourteen ninety five is you paint it onto your fabric, thereby creating a different. I'll just show you the different layers here. Right. This one's with three layers on. That one's with two layers on. Oops. That one's with one layer on, and that's without the without it on there. It basically just turns it into a um, waterproof fabric or a, a, a damp proof fabric. Oh, no, I won't bother, I won't bother, I won't bother. Uh, basically, you just paint, you just paint it on. Uh, now, if you use one coat, you have to wait 24 hours before you use it. If you're going to put two or three coats on, you have to wait a couple of hours between the layers uh, before, you, before you put it on. 
and it's, it's absolutely brilliant. You can either put it on before you start the project or after you finish. This is a finished item here. Now, Rebecca, this is one of Rebecca Reed's. She painted this one afterwards, and it's literally got that lovely um, kind of thing. And if you drop water on that, it will just run off like rivulets running off. It is fantastic. I've had it the last couple of days, and it sells so well. Right, what's next? This. That's ten ninety five, ten pounds ninety five. This is brilliant because if you need to do quick measurements, Janice uses this all the time. Look, that green on the corner there, that's an inch. That's an inch. So if you're doing a hem, you can just go around market. Quilters use a quarter inch seam allowance, don't they? That's quarter of an inch on the end there. Half an inch on the oh, half an inch on that corner there. Is it not quarter of an inch though? Yes, it is. Quarter of an inch there. You can measure a um, Buttonhole, length of a buttonhole, length of stitches, you want to do anything like that. It is just fantastic. And it slips into your purse or into your sewing kit. Always sells this, £10.95. Now, this is by the same lady that's done the um, one that you slide into your, your cover for your uh, iPad and things like that, your tablet cover. £10.95. Right, now, everything from now on, under £10. Under £10. What's next? Quilt pattern from Tilda. There you go. Lucy loves this one. I'll show you what this is. What it is, it tells you what fabrics you have to buy on the back. It tells you what fabrics you have to buy. This is limited, this one. And then inside, it's the pattern and how to... to, how to right, that's the quilt you're making. That's your template. And then it tells you, obviously, she's used Tilda fabrics on here, but she tells you how much of each fabric you need to buy. I mean, it's up to you. You can use that. You could just use it. And as long as you buy the right amount of fabric, you could do spectrum solids or anything with that, really, if you wanted to make it like a rainbow quilt. You see, if Jane, Jane Alcott was making it, it would all be a rainbow quilt. She'd start at the top in blue and work her way through, you know what I mean, in all the different colours. And then on the back, all the instructions of how to construct it. Very limited now, very limited. It's flying out at £5.45. Storage coming up next. Hang on, hang on, what else is in there? Oh, yeah, no, no, it's just like different, la it's, um, different languages, different languages. OK, storage. This one. Now, you recognise this. This is the same colourway as that big, the big that one we use. This is fantastic, right? These inside are fixed. So if you want to keep your scissors in there or your rulers in there, you can do. But maybe, maybe think, oh, I collect smaller things. I collect buttons. I collect pins. I collect sequins. I collect jewels, right? What you do is these, you snap these off. I'm not going to do it. But you snap those off and you can create... They slide in between there. So maybe you want lots of little ones. Maybe you want two of them half the size. At £9.95. What a brilliant story. It's Creative Options Pro Latch. That's this. Uh, at large and deep utility organiser, £9.95. It's brilliant, isn't it? Great little... These are all great little presents, aren't they? But also, 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 if you think... If, you're, if you've got a workroom with shelves on everything, you could just store... Instead of just having one layer like this, you could stack them, but cos they're see-through, cos they're opaque or semi-opaque, you can see what's in them, can't you? you can say, oh, I need the red beads. There they are. There they are. Slide it out, and there they all are. Nine ninety-five. Oh, going back. Freezer paper. Right, the freezer paper. If you want this, you've got to be quick. If you've got it in your basket, you need to check out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Need to warn you about this. Four pounds and ninety-five pence. It's absolutely flying out. Twelve meters of it. Plastic coated freezer paper, you know what it's for. Apart from wrapping your sandwiches and putting things in the deep freeze, you can use it for, look, a quilt appliques, quilt patterns. Um, uh, um, uh, Mandy Shaw used it for a lot of her, uh, like, snowmen shapes and things like that, doesn't she? And animal shapes as well. Stitch through it, rip it back. Um, the one side of it is the plastic coated side isn't, hasn't got glue on it, but it will stick to fabric and then come off. Okay? It doesn't leave a mark or anything like that. So look at all those different things you can use it for. You can even wrap a parcel and send a parcel in if you wanted to. Four pounds and 95 pence. Right. 
There you go. Embroidery transfers. The alphabet. So this is sweet, isn't it? Uh, it's that iron-on templates. Iron-on templates. All the instructions are inside, but you get all the letters. All They're all different designs. Like they're all sc uh, scrolly designs. They're iron-on templates. So you get eight uh, 12 by 11 inch sheets. No, eight and a half by 11 inch sheets. And um, all the letters you need are in there. Uh, I can't tell you what size the letters are, though. Oh, I'm going to open it then. I thought we had one of these already open, but... Look, they're so cute. If you're going to embroider them. There you go. There's all that. And obviously they're back to front. They are back to front because obviously when you iron them on. Now remember, when you do an iron on transfer, you don't want a squidgy ironing board. You want your iron as hot as possible. Please be careful. Uh, and then you can use it. I'm just working at seeing how many times you can use them. Cut out. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't say how many times you can use. Oh, yeah, eight. Eight times. Eight times you can use them. So that's fantastic, isn't it? 6 95 Oh, look, my pad's facing the camera there. Oh, no, it's all switched off. I'll have a look at it. There's a message come through. I'll get that in a second from you, for you. OK. Oh, which ones? Right, hang on, that goes there. Right, I've just got to go around here and get these. I'm sorry about this. Right, gold starter kit of brass. Hang on. I've got brass. Bra oh, they're all brass, that's why. So it'll be this one, the golden one. Is it HQGQ98? That's the one. Oh, there it is, yeah. This is, now, this is brilliant. These are studs, duty snaps, you know, like on your jeans and things like that. But in this, you get the tool. You see the tool in there. I'll just turn it round so you can see. You have to provide your own hammer, obviously. Um, and then what you do is you literally use the hammer and place them across the fabric and then uh, it'll tell, it tells you everything. But inside there are the tools, so the little pad for the butt back and the actual long tool that you put in to hit with the hammer, it's all in there. £4.95. But what you must do is when you've run out of these, keep the tool, keep the tool because... You can buy the replacements, but there's no tool in this one. See, there's no tool in that one. So what you do is you keep the tool out of your starter pack and then you can just keep doing them because they're um, 15 millimetre and these are 15 millimetre as well. They're like bit heavy duty press studs, aren't they? That's what they are. I'm sorry, I just need to... Um... There's something gone wrong with my computer. That's what there you go, I'm back now. So do you want to send a message through then? Uh, three pounds and 95 pence. They're fantastic. You, can't, you can use them for bags, you can use them for jeans, you can use them for jackets and everything like that. Sharon, what is the depth of the storage containers, please? Don't change, you're the best. Nana Shazza. Oh, I'll have a look for you. Sorry, I didn't measure. OK, just quickly, uh, one quickly, I'll just do this for Shazza. Um, it's three inches, which is eight centimetres deep. It's uh, 14 inches, which is 36 centimetres that way across, and it's uh, 8 and 3 quarter inches, 22 centimetres that way. It's brand new today. All right, OK, if... OK, you need to check out your baskets. You need to check out your baskets. There's very few left. Very, very few left. Um, when I do the other boxes, I'll measure them automatically. Thank you. Right, so go back to press studs. So we've now got another starter kit. In the... Mm, yeah, I've got two more starter kits here. Hang on. Right, I've got 64 or 25. INGQ 64. Yeah. That's right. No, no. Here we go. The other, this is another starter kit here. 495. So, again, you get the 15... Oh, no, these are 12... No, 15 millimetre. 15 millimeter press studs, the big uh, industrial rust proof they are, so they go through the washing machine and tumble dry, no problem. Then, if you run out, we then have the re uh, refill pack. Again, 15 millimeters. You get 12 sets in there, so I mean, it's under, well, let's have a look, 395, wasn't it this? 
Three pounds and 95 pence, that one. Right, now, also, uh, the uh, these ones, they're like an old copper or bronze colour. I don't have the starter kit for these, but it's just the refill. So maybe you've bought the gold ones, you're thinking, oh, some brass-looking ones. Um, they're, well, they're, not, they're made of brass, but they're kind of that copper finish, aren't they? It's XKGQ23, this one. Bronze, there you go, bronze. Make the most European peaks. Remember, you only pay one post no matter how many items you buy. Check out as many times you like as well. Right, OK, 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 OK. Then I've got some other press studs here. These are fact, they're called anorak press studs. Now, you put these in a slightly different way. You can't use the tool from that one to make this one. This is a different make. This is millwood, this one. Uh, the instructions are all on the back there. But these are more of a brushed bronze colour, these. They call them the anorak. That's the kind of weight there. That, that's the thing that you put... That's the thing you use. I can't... I, I, as you can see, that's the thing you use that you bang with the hammer. But instead of being metal like in those, it's a plastic one. So that's the tool. That's the tool for punching the hole in the fabric and then punching... And then you get your hammer and you bang that bit there and it displays the press stud. <sighs> Pink storage next. Yeah, it's only 25 past. Yes. <laughs> This is pretty, isn't it? Oh, OK, we got... I don't need to mention this. We've got the dimension of this one. Right. Um, Lucy said, I'm having one of those for all my fat quarters, right? It's £8.95. Right, for Shazza and everybody else, the height... 8.2 centimetres and in inches. That's about five, six inches now. Hang on, hang on. 8 point what? Two centimetres. Oh, sorry, I've got that wrong. Three inches, three inches. Length... 36.1 centimetres, which is 14 inches. And the width looks about the same. Oh, a bit bigger. 35.5, which is 14 inches. There you go. Right, well, how many fat quarters? That's what Lucy's going to use hers for. I'd put my sandwiches in there myself. Mind you, the amount of food little Paul brings, so would he? Nice, isn't it? Love the colour. Lunchbox, eight ninety-five. Uh, what else could you put in there? Fat quarters. You could put your scissors in there. Roachy cutters, maybe. I don't know. What else could you put in there? Oh, I tell you what, this would be good for if you do classes and you don't take all of your kit with you. You could just put everything in here, like your scissors, your ruler, your thread, and everything, and take it to the class. Oh, I'm off to my class now. Like that. Uh, if you don't like pink, I've got it in purple. Purple, as they say in Liverpool. Is it exactly the same thing? Yep, <laughs> just wipe it. Um, exactly the same thing. Exactly the same, but in purple. Purple. Oh, do you know what I'd do? I'd buy both of them, look. Oh, and look how they stack together. Hello! They'd look lovely. Now, you know whose house this would look nice in? At uh, Ginger Mike's. He's just painted his... That, um, oh, mind you, it's his lounge. Maybe he doesn't want storage boxes in his lounge, but his lounge are these two colours. That's right, he says he's done the walls in the purple and he's got pink cushions. Oh, whoa, whoa, what? Right. Right, nearly half of those have gone into baskets already. Nearly... Oh, the purple, sorry, the purple one. Half of those have gone into baskets... You need to check out. You need to check out. But you can check out as often as you like. You can check out as often as you like. You still only pay one P&P, remember, all day long. But half of those went straight into baskets and P... And people are multi-buying, so they're going to sell out. They are going to sell out, but look how brilliant are they. Get the pink and the purple. I'd get two of one of them and make a sandwich. I haven't got another pink one to put on top. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do two, buy two pinks and one purple. Right, if everyone... The purple. Right, if everyone checks out, the purple's gone. OK. Next. Buttons. Yeah, why not? Which one's first? Yes, we have. Yes. Oh, you might not have been able to buy these, um, these, you mean, or the wooden ones. Right, we have seen these. They've been in a kit. They've been in a kit, definitely, because we had them in a kit where you only needed two buttons and we gave you 30 buttons. Not gave you, you bought 30 buttons. Oh, hang on, is it not that one? Is it that one? 
No? Okay. Wooden buttons, 30 pieces of port sorted sizes. L, M, G, Q, 32. Yep, that's it. One pound and 45 pence. One pound and 45 pence. Look at them all, all different sizes in there. Wooden buttons. Do you want to send me those messages through? No, nothing's come through. Um, one pound and 45 pence. There you go, Sylvie. Hello, John. Would eau de coat wash out in the washing machine? Sylvie. Um, I'll have a check, but I don't think so. I'll have a look for you now. There's two more buttons. Oh, one more message, sorry. Uh, Lorraine, magenta storage ideal will match my other items in my sewing room. Lorraine, Lorraine, if you want it... Oh, no, it's the magenta. Oh, yeah, the magenta. How are we doing with the magenta? We'll just check, we'll just check. I'm just, just looking at the outer cut. I'm sure it's washable afterwards. Hang on. Well, it doesn't say, but you are waterproofing the fabrics. I'm presuming it should be all right. Right, OK, what I'm going to do is I know lots and lots and lots of you have bought this and used it, and you always message in saying how much you've... Can you wash the piece, the item? Can... That's a, maybe we should do some market research. Can you wash the item after you've overcoated it? Let me know, 14.95. Right. Uh, the other buttons, the hearts... Is it the hearts? Yeah. There's more than two hearts in there. Do you know what I should get these for Anne in the village? She collects bunt buttons. Are they called Heartbreaker? Aww. £2.95. Aren't they lovely? Uh, Premier, Premier, you've not seen these before. You've not seen these before. Uh, now, so how many hearts do you get in there? Let's have a look. Doesn't say, does it not? Uh, I'll have a look on the back here. That, that's really... that's a tough, isn't it? 30. You get 30 in there. 30 buns. They're all different. They're all different sizes and shapes. Look. Now, the other thing I've got to say very, very quickly, I think my Sky Plus has missed out on EastEnders because the last EastEnders I watched, Cush, right, was in a hospital bed saying, yes, I'll have the operation. I tuned in yesterday to watch yesterday or, or, on my Sky Plus, which is the next one recorded. Cush is in the cafe with Denise and... Bonnie Langford's in the hospital with her hair all tied back, saying I've got to have an operation. I've passed it on to my children. Anyway, just remind me, because it's the heart. It's the heart. No, no, it's not a spoiler alert. Yes, it is. I texted Hannah last night, but she didn't reply. She was cooking dinner for her, for her new boyfriend, wasn't she? I said, I know you'll be in the middle of wrapping your cod's loin in pancetta. <laughs> it's a recipe, Paul. Here we go. Four blue-green iridescent 17mm buttons. Mike, can you hear him? Uh, £1.95. These are beautiful. Cardigans. I put these on cardigans. These are, look lovely. You know on uh, Little Paul's um, jackets, he always put buttons up, up the cuffs of the jacket. These were nice. Two of these on each arm. Oh, do you know what? You know your, your um, favourite shirt fabric yesterday, Paul? The, the, the um, windowpane gingham. You know, you, you, it was like a dark blue with a pink, big pink check. We had it in the um, last day of the summer sale yesterday and it went to such a ridiculous price. Sold out, flew out. Anyway, £1.95, you get four buttons there. It's 50p each, isn't it? They're lovely. I think they're gorgeous. Right, OK. Right, the purple sold out. Right, let's see how many pinks are left. The magenta, as uh, Lorraine calls them. Lots of people multiplying. Sorry about all the fingerprints, that's Amy. How many of the pinks have I got left? Eight left. There's eight of the pink left. The purple have sold out. There's eight of the pink left. Oh, it's getting very hot in here, isn't it? <laughs> right, what's next? One more storage box. Let's do that, then. I can... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just looking at all the things we haven't done yet. Yeah, there's that. that that's it. That's it. That's all, we, that's all we haven't done yet there. What, is there something else? No. I've done it. Oh, no, hang on. There's that there. There's that there. So I've got the, that little pile there I haven't done yet. At uh, 3 Uh Right, hang on. So I'll just take the cellophane off so we can get to it properly. Right, hemline. Oh, shit. 
the, I have to show you this, right? I have to show you this because it's got it's like the bigger one earlier. Oh, hang on. Look, it's got flexible compartments. So you get all of these, you get all of these right in there. They're numbered as well, I think, aren't they? Yeah, they've got numbers on them. So if you if you if you collect beads, <coughs> you can say, oh, get me the beads from section one. But anyway, you can make big sections, you can make little sections. Oops, you can make rubbish sections like me. Come on, John, you've got one job. There you go. Oh no, it isn't. <gasps> oh, hang on. It's because I'm trying to do it back to front, isn't it? There you go. Oh, I've had a message about the eau de coat. Cheryl, yes, you can machine wash eau de coat. I've made my dog's coats and washed them regularly at 30 degrees. Hope that's helpful. Cheryl, thank you so much. Now, was it Karen that wants to know? Karen, yes, 30 degrees. Right, I'll carry on making these, shall I? Oh, no, Sylvie, it was Sylvie, not Karen. Sylvie, Sylvie, Sylvie. I know. Loads of you coming in for this one. It's called a large storage box. I wouldn't call it large myself. That one was large, wasn't it? We're having it large, though, aren't we? Is that, oh, is that rude? Am I allowed to say that? Uh, you can, like, they've got nuts, bolts. I'll show you the picture so you can see what I'm talking about. Nuts, bolts, little drawing pins, uh, fishing, fishing hooks. And what's that? That's a boy. No, not a boy. What's it? Float. A float. A float, isn't it, that one? No, no, actually, it's not a float, because it's got hooks on the bottom of there. And they've got safety pins on that one there. Anyway. They're calling it a large one. What's the measurement? Oh, it's got a ruler on it. It's got a ruler across, so I'd say it was about 10 inches across. Is that right, Paul? 26.7 centimetres across. And... 16.6. 4.5. Four point five adjustable click-in sturdy dividers, handy hanging hole. Oh, look! So you can put it in your shed or your storage cupboard. Easy to trim off if you don't want it. Clear, strong, and durable. Lid includes handy metric and imperial rulers, strongest dual catches and hinges, and a clear, strong, quality storage box for all household needs and hobbies. Stationary, sewing, nuts and bolts, and fishing and hobby. I think that's brilliant. Loads of those flying out. Oh. Under four pounds. And if you've already bought something else, you've just paying one P&P, aren't you? My next door neighbour, John, you know the old folk that live next door to me, he has old coffee jars and he screws the top of the old coffee jar to the underneath of a wooden shelf and the screws and nuts and bolts are all in there and he does that. Right. No, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. I can't do that again. He's married to Chris, you know, I said, from the lady, uh, the Chipping Camden Lady Quilters. Had a brilliant time. Um, right, that's that, that's that. Right, shall I do the things that we haven't done yet? The which one? Oh, OK. Oh! I haven't got that. Where is it? Hang on, it must be here somewhere. Where is it? Can you see it on the table? Right, hang on, if I tidy up a little bit... Then I can... Oh, there it is, found it! Right. Um, these are needles, right? Prim Quilters Premium with silver eye, 26mm fine, £4.45, pence, right? You think, now, normally, you, what you do is you take the top off, don't you? And you have to think, oh, I'll get one needle out that'll all go all over the place. Not with this. Look. And then, when you're finished, you pop them all back. Again. And they come out. They come out a lot easily. Look, hang on. Oh, hang on. Look. Oh. Now, they're very short needles, these ones. These are 26 millimetre fine. Silver, uh, they've got a silver eye. They're fine needles. Pop them all away. Oh, I need a needle. Oh. Oh, no. What have I done? Oh, honestly. There you go, there you go, there you go. I just wasn't being strict enough with it. One job, John Scott, one job. So you need a needle. Uh, £4.45. 
We've got a message. Helen, I love that this show is interacting. Chatting to you live makes me feel like I've got visitors in my house. Well, where's my cup of tea and my cake? I've been here for an hour and a half. How are you, Helen? Is that now? Is that Helen with the biscuit tin? Did we find it? Oh, that's a different Helen. That's a different Helen. So it could have been that Helen. Should we show the biscuit tin very quickly? Oh, later, later, not yet, not yet. Why not now? Okay then. What's next? <gasps> I had this yesterday or the day before, didn't I? This is brilliant, right? This is Natasha's favourite tool. This one. You get all three sizes. You get fat, medium, and thin. Right? Seven pounds and 95 pence. Now, Paul says that's like his waist during the year. No, that's Paul's waist during the year, and that's it. Look, it's the... Si now, Paul came in this morning saying, oh, if only I thought of this, I could have been a millionaire by now. If you thought of this, Paul, I said exactly the same yesterday. If you've got a rouleau loop that you need turning through, can you ask Amy to come in and take, make it cooler in here? It's like a sauna in here now at the moment. So, oh, hang on, what do they put inside here? Oh, there's another set in there. <laughs> right, so if you've got a rouleau that you need turning through, Hannah made this rouleau, so if it falls to pieces, it's not my fault, right? You think, oh, I could turn that through. And what Jo normally does is she fiddles to pull it through and everything, right? What you do is you get the, 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 the tubey bit, put it in there, push it right down to the bottom, you get a pushy, sticky thing, right? Watch. It's turned through. It's turned through and you've got your rouleau loop all done nicely. And then you've got, yeah, then if you want to push the corners out, use the stick as you direct the top of it up. There you go. Would you like to see it again? I'd love to go through the other way, obviously. For... So you get your tube, you pop it down your rouleau, you get your sticky pointy pushy thing, you push it up there through the hole. I think this is brilliant. No wonder Natasha's kept this to herself. And then you've turned it through. You've turned it through. So there's a small and a medium and a large for £7.95. Do you know what? Yesterday, when I did it yesterday, I put the, the one on the desk in my back pocket so I was going to take it home just while I didn't, isn't it? £7.95. I think that's brilliant. They don't seem... The boys upstairs don't seem very impressed with that. Anyway, this is the one that I, cut, I cleaned my ear with yesterday, do you remember? <laughs> right, what else have I got? Wonder Clips. Ten of these in a pack. Uh, these are brilliant for if you're doing the, the uh, binding on a quilt. Uh, one side is flat, completely flat, so that goes underneath the fabric, so you don't have to move the fabric at all. And then Joy loves these, you can move them up and down as you're sewing the, the binding on and everything like that. Ten Wonder Clips for £7.95. and pence. Brilliant, aren't they? What's the matter, little ball? Oh, no. He's rarely wrong, but he's done something really stupid, apparently, today. Yeah. Oh, no! Right. <clears throat> How many sold? Right. <clears throat> if... For this one, right? If you bought this earlier... I'm ever sorry, because just ring the call centre. Just give the call centre a quick ring. They'll, they'll sort it for you. It's the same price, so it doesn't matter. But what happened was uh, the wrong graphics went through. This is 6 95 for the transfers. The transfers of the alphabet. Why there was that confusion is because we also have this one, which is embroidery transfers again, but different embroidery transfers. Look, these are the tattoo. That might be my fault, because you did shout out tattoo and I didn't know what you were talking about. So that could be... I could take the blame for that one. Tattoo. That's nice, Paul. I'm glad to know you got my back. Tattoo. So they're, they're different letters. Different letters, you see. £6.95. Still the same thing. The, uh, um, the uh, transfers that you use up to eight times. Brilliant. £6.95. Right. No, they don't iron them onto your skin. They're not tattoos for your skin. Right. right. Iron cleaner. Now, this is brilliant. If you iron... I've... Do you know what? We use this, right? We, this is the one we use here. And I've got one of these at home. I took one home. So I'm just going to borrow it, Jay. And I can't do it now because the iron's on. But what you do is it's like a lipstick. Oh, now, before you start, make sure you do it in a ventilated room or, or not a room with um, a beep, 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 beep. A smoke alarm. 
Right. What you do is you take it out of the packet. I'll do it now. Take it out of the packet. Uh, and then you take it off. And inside is this kind of tube of sulfurous iron cleaner. I'm not going to do it. What you do is the iron has to be hot. Get the iron hot and then I leave mine on. But I think you're supposed to switch it off. And then if you've got all brown on the iron, you take that off and you paint... You use this as a cleaner. Have a cloth ready. Have a cloth ready because it does dribble down the iron. All the brown stains all dribble down the iron. You've got to be ready to wipe them all off and everything. Just removes all the stains. But then what I suggest you do is once you've... When you've done it, put water in your iron and really steam, steam, steam through. Because then any brown or any of this that's got into your steam holes will then be... Because you don't, what you don't want to do is what happened here. Somebody cleaned the iron, but they didn't then steam it through. And who was it? Was it um, Jennifer Taylor? I think Jennifer Taylor was ironing her blouse to wear, and it, she steamed it and pfft, like that with all brown all over it and everything. So she wasn't very happy. And then the next day, uh, Natasha came in and the same thing happened to Natasha as well. So, just so you know, that, make sure you clean it through afterwards. Two ninety five. Now, the thing is, right, I remember used to, I used to buy these when I worked in theatre because we got through hundreds of them because we were using starch a lot and everything. I remember them being much more expensive than that back in the day. Back in the day, I remember that. Two ninety five. Was, what day was that? I don't know what day it was. It was a long time ago. Check out your baskets. Check out your baskets. One PMP. Remember, if you bought one of everything, I've got Velcro stickies. And that's it. This is the last one I've got to show you. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a recap. I'll do a recap, don't worry. 32 items we've done in 45 minutes. Um, I know I'm being a pain, but that's a bit cold. Whatever, if you just put that on. That's too, that's too cold. Yeah, that's too cold, Amy. These are Velcro stick-on ovals. They're black. You get eight sets of them, and you literally stick them on. So if you want a one-touch fastening on something, if you don't want to have a zip, if you don't want to... Uh, well, actually, I'm saying now, I wouldn't put them instead of a zip. I wouldn't have Velcro fastening instead of a zip. But if you've just got something like that, a collar that flaps in the wind or uh, cuffs that just slightly flap a bit, then you could put one of these on. And they just stick. They stick on. They stick on. You don't have to iron or anything. They stick on. What does it say here? Let me just have a read. I think they're washable as well. Yeah, washable at 30 degrees. You peel the back off, you stick them on. Oh, you leave them for 24 hours before you use them. I'm going by the pictures. Here we go. No sewing, gluing or ironing required. Simply peel, stick and done. Wash and dry the fabric before applying. Peel from release liner and press adhesive into fabric. Reaches full permanent bond after 24 hours. Works best on cotton, polyester, poly blends and nylon. I think that'd be good for inside a bag, a tote bag. Do you know what I mean? Oh, they've got it on the inside of cushions on their picture. Oh, that's a good idea. No sewing, no needle, no gluing, no ironing. 32 items done. Now, check out your baskets. Got nothing else to show you. Check out your baskets. Helen? Oh, Helen's biscuiting. Now, which Helen is it? I don't know which Helen it is. I know she missed in yesterday, but we had a Helen from Cambridge and a Helen from Derbyshire today, haven't we? Oh, they... There you go. That, there you go. There's Helen's um, biscuit tin from yesterday. Right, recapping, recapping. The Goddess Ironing Sheet. It looks like... If, uh, it, doesn't it look like if you put the iron on that, it will just melt into... Um... Oh, it's Helen from Cambridge. There you go. There's your biscuit tin, Helen. You can blame Hannah for not showing yesterday. She was a bit hectic yesterday. Um, this goddess sheet is sure to become, again, I'm reading it, your indispensable fusing tool. It can last a long time and your iron will stay fuse-free and clean. Here's how. Since the goddess uh, sheet is identical on both sides, we give you a goddess curve to help you dedicate one side to your iron and the other side to contact with fusible. You can do that by simply confirming that the goddess curve is in the upper right or the right-hand corner. Uh, always, re always remove any bits of fuse that cling to the fuse side of the sheet after ironing. It's just brilliant. It's like the Teflon one we have, but it's just a different, different fabric. £14.95. Misty Fuse, this one's called. Right, prim template set next. Just get... Yeah, a few things were just uh, po po popping out. Anything you want to see... Let me know quickly, because we've only got about five minutes left. This is brilliant. I should go through this a bit more. Let me show you, right? So you get a square. You get a smaller square. 
you get a big triangle, you get a medium triangle, and you get a small triangle. Oh, and you get a medium square. That wasn't very well planned, though. So there, you get six of them. You build a house with that, couldn't you? Um, oh, and go. Bitter Schutzfeuille enter Fernan. Bitter? I, I can't, that's it. Uh, I don't know the others. Oh, I don't know that one, definitely. Right, this is brilliant, right? These are templates, right? Look at, the, look at how you can use them. I'll just show you in here. This, you get this with it, you get this with it, look. Oh, turn the page. Yeah, the page is very thick. All the instructions of what you have to do. Look, cushion making. And then, look, two-piece designs. You can do all these different designs using these templates. Sp oh, spinning geese. I've never heard of that one. We've heard of flying geese, but not spinning geese. Friendship star, watermelon. Oh, no, water wheel. Blocks and stars. Tippy canoe. Tippy canoe and Tyler too. What's that? Tippy canoe and Tyler too. It's nice, isn't it? Uh... Card tricks, Jacob's Ladder, Ohio Star, Spinning Geese, Friendship. There's loads you can do in there, look. It's fantastic, isn't it? Add it to your basket, £8.95. It would be a brilliant present. Even if you just have it in your present cupboard. You haven't got a reason for giving it. But who was it telling me the other day they bought their first two Christmas presents? I think it was Hannah. Another great present here. Ow! Right, pins on floor, be careful they're sharp. <sighs> I'd spend hours doing that. Four pounds and 45 pence, you don't have to do that. You can just have it as your pin, as your pin cushion. Um, just be careful the pins are sharp. Uh, four pounds and 95, 45, four pounds, 45 pence. Also, um, you can use it for uh, safety pins or paper clips or anything magnetic, really. Ball bearings. I'll tell you what you could do, you could put ball bearings on there and you could make, um, you know, they have, um, what were those things called? With like a cat's cradle, they have um, toys for grown-ups, as it were. I don't want to say adult toys because that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Four pounds and 45 pence, pre-magnetic pincushion. Look. Freezer papers flying out this morning. Right. Freezer paper. Most popular thing of the hour so far. It protects work surfaces. Uh, paints, markers and glue won't soak through. You could pour paint or pudding onto the plastic side for ideal finger painting. Pudding? Why would you put pudding on it? Use as a paint palette or to practice decorative uh, painting. School books can be covered, personalised with stickers or drawings. Cover a party table. Make a non-slip stencil. You can create templates to reduce time in quilting, piecing, or appliqueing. Um, or you can use everyday use, wrap packages for the mail, make a disposable tablecloth for picnics and barbecues, line shelves and drawers, use to catch in refrigerator drawers or bins, put it under pet dishes. Oh, I need some of this, then. Um, or you can use it when uh, potting, repotting plants. Protects kitchen counters. Juices from raw meats won't leak through. <clears throat> Great cheese or roll dough. You can make banners for school functions. Welcome greetings or parties. Sit for fine, four ninety five. Oh, got to do this again. Got to go in a minute, but I'll do this. I'll do this. Right. You get all three sizes: small, medium, and large. I'll call them not fat, thin, and regular. OK, what you do, if you need a rouleau turning through, you put your, this one inside the ruler, rouleau, rouleau, rouleau. You let it drop down. You get your turny, tooly wooden thing. Push it through the end there. Push, 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 push. Push, 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 push. And it's done. Isn't it brilliant? We had so many people messaging yesterday saying, I've got that and it's the best thing I ever bought. £7.95. I love it. 
The amount of years I spent trying to get a rouleau through, you know, try, or doing the one with the barb on and trying to pull it through anything. That's fantastic. And the three different sizes in there. So you're getting three. So they're less than two pounds a turner. Most of the storage is selling out, just so you know. Just so you know. Right, we had more stock of this one, but it's very, very, very popular. It's good if you do fishing for your hooks and your floats. It's good if you do sewing. It's good if your husband or boyfriend or partner has nuts and bolts in the garage. Uh, little bits of jewellery. Right, what you do is, see these, these all come out. So you could, excuse me, if you want, if you're doing fishing, you could put your floats, your long floats in that middle bit there, and then you put your different size hooks, and you have little weights, don't you, when you do fishing, that you put on the, I only know this because I used to do fishing years ago, you have little weights with a split bit in that you put on the, to make it a bit heavier. Put those in there as well. Three pounds and 95 pence. The hemline large, it's called the large storage box, it's not that big, look. It's even got this look. If you want to hang them up, hang it up in a cupboard, or you can hang it up in your garage or your shed. Oh, this is one Lucy's bought, she's saying. She wanted the purple one, but the purple one sold out. So she's got that one. It's good for nuts and bolts, that, Lucy. Do your Mark do not have nuts and bolts in the garage? Do his DIY? I have to tell you about her, Mark, later. He's got this fantastic website where you can buy pictures. It's brilliant. Right, anything that's in your basket you need to check out. You need to check out. Uh, little Paul's going to the toilet. It's nice, isn't it? We're going now, but Lucy's up next, making this really, really lovely table with one of the kits has got fabric in that I've never seen before. See you in three. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. It's easy to buy the products you see on our shows. To buy any of the items featured on today's programmes, just head over to our website, www.sewingquarter.com. Click on the video stream and you'll be taken to our watch page. Here you'll find the product that is on air right now at the top of the page. Beneath that, you'll find all the products demonstrated in this morning's shows. To add an item to your basket, simply log into your account or register with us. Then you can either check out or keep shopping. Remember, our flat rate delivery charge lets you shop all day and check out as many times as you like and only pay once for postage and packing. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. The Sewing Quarter website is simple and easy to use. You can view a live broadcast of the show on our homepage. Get instant access to our online shop, which has a wide range of wonderful products for you to choose from. You can also enjoy a selection of projects and guides, which we have on offer to help you enhance your skills and gain valuable tips. Watch the live shows and you can buy the product which is currently being shown on air. You can even message the studio to ask our presenters or team any questions you might have. Below, you'll find all the products from today's show for you to look at and purchase. On the right of the screen, next to today's products, you will find our simple programme guide listing all upcoming shows. So, join us today at sewingquarter.com. Britain's favourite sewing show is coming to London and we'll be there with bells on. The Great British Sewing Bee Live is taking place over four days from the 21st to the 24th of September at XL London. If you're a hobbyist dressmaker who's been inspired by what you've seen on the Sewing Bee, a seasoned professional looking for new ideas, or just fancy taking dressmaking up for the first time, this is the event for you. We are proudly sponsoring the Demo Theatre with live performances from designer, author and former Sewing Bee contestant Jennifer Taylor throughout the weekend. And with our discount code SQ241, you'll get two tickets for the price of one. So what are you waiting for? Grab your tickets now and join the buzz at the Great British Sewing Bee live this September. Um, 
Remember Natasha and um, Rebecca Reed will be there every day, uh, and Jennifer will be there every day, but Thursday, the sewing bee, the advert's just been on. I'm popping along on Friday just to, just as a guest, really, just taking in the sights of East London. No, I'll come to, I'm coming to the sewing bee and then I'll be going home. Uh, anyway, look at this. Look at this. It's a table runner. And isn't that lovely fabric? Isn't that beautiful fabric there? And uh, we've got four lovely bundles to show you to make that. Right, I'll just put that front, along the front of Lucy's table there. Right, so that one there, I've never seen that fabric. Apparently it's been on once before. I've never seen it before. It's called Mountain Range, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, no. Right, now, this is the one. <laughs> this is the one. Well, you know, we had the triangle fabric the other day, and somebody hadn't written altitude, had they? They won attitude. So we were, like, selling triangle with attitude, and it was like, no, it's from the altitude range, John. So it's altitude. They're like mountains, aren't they? But Paul thinks it looks like um, camouflage. He's got, so, like, a little camouflage suit made out of this fabric. So you get uh, three metres of fabric, a metre of each. You get a metre of the, the mountains... A metre of the spot on and a metre of the linear in there for £41.45. But, 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 you also get, you also get in the kit, you also get the booklet as well, which I'll go through, making table or make table runners. That comes in the kit as well. So it's three metres of fabric plus the booklet, ten delicious quilts to sew. Right, OK. Now, as we haven't seen that fabric before, Paul and I thought it might be quite nice... This is, I think this is a metre here I've got. But if you want to buy this by the half metre, then you can do. Look, it's nice, isn't it? It's called Dashwood Studio. Oh, it is mountains. Attitude Mountains. Altitude Mountains. £6.50 for half a metre. 100% cotton machine washable. Love the colours in there. Love the colours. Right, OK, I'll carry on, because I've got three other bundles to show you. I've got an Anna Maria Horner. Now, it's called Social Climber, this one, in ice. And it's the uh, ice, ice, baby, ice, ice. And it, we've teamed it with a linear and a uh, spectrum solid. Again, you get a metre of each fabric, and you get the booklet for £40.95. Now, you see what I would do? I love those three fabrics. I'd buy this bundle. I'd use the fabrics and then give the book to somebody as a gift. Because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really one for table runners, to be 100% honest with you. No, no. No, I had a friend uh, called Jan Olaf, and his mum had one for every different occasion. That's lovely, isn't it? So there's that one and there's that one. Then we've got Kaif raked fabric. So you get the Kaif raked. You get the blue... I think that's called Sea View or something like that, the blue uh, linear there, and then the... Dark, dark navy blue there. Forty-two ninety-five again. You get three metres of fabric plus the booklet. Forty-two pounds and ninety-five pence. It's called Cave Cobalt. Oh, they haven't put the raked in there. It's just called the Cave Cobalt. I know that one. Okay, and then last but not least, this is lovely. Now, don't get confused with this fabric. Right, it's called Bluebell, but this is autumn in Bluebell wood. Nice, isn't it? Look. So what you get is you get a metre of the uh, pattern, you get a metre of the linear and a metre of the solid, £39.95, along with the book clips. Lovely, lovely. See, that'd be gorgeous for Christmas, wouldn't it? £39.95 with the booklets, with the booklet, with the booklets as well, which I'll go through with you because there's ten delicious quilts to sew in the booklet. Aren't there, Lucy? There, there is indeed. They Hello. are delicious. I'm just... What's this? We'll come to that. OK, I just thought it was in the way. I was going to put it in the bin. <laughs> so you've no, made a table runner. So I've made a table runner. OK. Yeah, so um, it's a pattern in the book. I've just been cutting some strips. Oh, yes, yeah, so, so it's in the book. Shall I just show you, quickly show you the book? Because there's... Um, oh, I've just remembered which one this one is. This one's got the, one of the most gorgeous table runners I've ever seen. They're um, beautiful. They're lovely, because they're not all just straight table runners. Look at that one. That one's like a big hexy, isn't it, that one? Oh. Right, but look, 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 look. Isn't that... I love that it's beautiful. one. Beautiful. I mean, that's re it's really... You'd have that as a wall hanging, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, yes, exactly. You wouldn't exactly. put things on that. It's so and it's got clamshells in it, you know, which is Hannah's favourite. Look. 
Aren't they lovely? Look at that. Look at that. Look. Oh, oh, now that's this one. That's the one we're doing, isn't it? Yes. Very different, isn't it, in the, in the plain fabric? It looks lovely in our, in our mix of fabrics, but um, very different. There's another gorgeous one, look. I'd want that one going up the stairs, really. I love that. I like a pleat. I, oh, I like that one as well. Yeah, that's Beautiful. Nice. There's ten projects in there. Now, I've got to warn you, you've all flurried in to buy the uh, one with the reindeers in the wood, in the bluebell wood. Beautiful. There's only three left. Check out your baskets. If you've got any basket, you need to check out. You need to check out. Maybe right, I'll, okay. do the, I'll so, cut that one first then. Oh, yes, which is <laughs> one we're doing. This is the bundle we're doing. Yeah. That's a shame, isn't it? I'll cut that one first. Right, OK. Where is it? I've lost it now. So I need it because I can't remember the measurements. Oh, off the top honestly. Of my head. It's a two, well, they call it a two colour table runner, don't they? But we've they actually. They do, used yeah. No, I've. Three colours. I've gone a bit um, different because I think it is nice to have a focal print there in the. Yes. In the central now, part. you've got three metres of fabric in total. Has, has it taken three metres to make that whole table quilt? Um, I did, yeah, I used some for the backing. I think, so I will have had some dots left over for yes. that one. And some of the, and you have some of the, the uh, mountain fabric left yes, over Yes, some well, of the mountain yeah. fabric as well, but I've used that in the binding as well. I think that works oh, yes, really nicely as, yeah. a, as a binding. Yeah. So you will have some left over. Yeah. It just depend, and it depends, depends on which, which way round you do, way it, you do it. Because yeah. you might not. You've done all three squares in the middle, the same fabric, but you don't have to do that. You could do each of the squares with the, with the, bra with the borders in different colours. Do, yeah, you? in different ones. Yeah. So for this one that we're doing, I'm going to do the, all the squares in this and alternate. Oh, OK. Um, alternate that. But OK, so you've not cut anything out in prep then? Well, I wanted to show fussy cutting these um, strips right. because they're quite um, large. So these, the square, the central squares are nine and a half by nine and a half. Finished or cut? That's the cut measurement. Uh, also, also, you get uh, sorry, you get, yeah, cut and then finished. There'll be nine. Yes. Yeah. So, so you get you get the book with the, the bundle. So don't worry about writing the measurements down now because it's all the instructions. You might not want to make this one. You might want to make one of the others out of fabric. But go on. Right. So I'm using the uh, long one. ruler so I can cut the width, yeah. Um, but I'm going to have to go with the measurements on the um, cutting mat for, for this, which we don't do very often. Why are you doing that? Because I need to cut nine and a half inches. This is only oh, um, okay, six okay, and okay, a half. Okay, right. So what I want to do, handily, that's not bad, actually. When you're cutting it, you want to think about which bit you want to be the focus. Right. So in this, for example, if we were to cut nine and a half here, yes. we'd get two strips of the... Reindeers. Reindeers. Or if we cut it here, we're going to have it more or less central. central. So you want to have a think about... Oh, yes, because other, there's nothing to say that the one you get will start here. The one you get could no, start halfway could be, through a reindeer exactly. and you wouldn't want just so the legs So you want to look in. at where you want to do and that's yeah. it. You don't just want, like, the antlers... <laughs> Sticking out. It's sticking out along yeah. the edges. So you do need to think about where you want to cut it. And now I might cut this one at nine and a half. So I'll do that. You, I mean, you're always going to be chopping something off, aren't yes. you? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's, but it's a tree just, or... A, it's yeah. just what's going to be the... Yeah, but you don't... If you've got reindeers on it... Oh, you see, you've cut through a hedgehog now. No, I haven't. Have you not? No, no, no. Are you sure? So, yes, because that's going to be the seam allowance there. Look, the oh, hedgehogs yes. are there. All right, then. So the hedgehogs are just going to make it yeah. into the thing. But see, now if I'm going to cut another strip, I don't actually need to because I get them all from one. But if I was going to cut another strip now, I can just about, I can just get away with that and I'm going to end up with two. But then that means that the reindeer's in the strips. If you want all three strips to be the same, yeah. you need to move this ruler so you've always got... So you, what I would sort of do is then go like this and go, right, there's the reindeer's, there's the reindeer's, there's, match it up like match that. Up. Then you know it's going to be in exactly the yeah. right place, don't you? Whereas... Well, this is sold out, this bundle's sold out now. Oh, well, I'm going to carry on anyway. Yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> I could go and get one of the others. You can chop no, that I'm up. Gonna go, I'm just going to cut it. Why are you it? cutting another one? Because I'm just going to show you. Oh, OK. So if I cut another nine and a half now... Yeah. ..which this print actually works perfectly at this size, if you can see, that's going to be my quarter inch there. So I've got two lots yeah. of the days. So what I might do is have the one where it's more central as my central square... Uh, and cut to okay. where I've got... Mo I'll ultimately have more reindeers 
either side. But also, you're going to have to fussy cut the going the Squares. other way as well yes. because you don't want to cut those reindeer and just have a reindeer's bottom. No, exactly. In the so of you the don't plates. want to go have gone to have that work. Can I just point out? Oh. On the selvage, it's lovely. I've just. You know how you off. have the colours, normally circles. Look, they can. Yeah. They, they, so you've got all these lovely little acorn leaves. Leaves, so pretty. Oh. So we need to cut the selvage off. So I'm just going to oh. um, attack a hedgehog. Yeah, it's good. Uh, so, yeah. You need to go a bit further. Sorry about that hedgehog. Well. Because then now, you're, even with the seam latch, you're going to have a hedgehog's bottom. But I, <laughs> but I might need to adjust this where I'm going to cut it. You see. Right. Actually, that's okay. Yeah. So we've got that's a nice yeah. area. Then we're going to have four, four eight lots reindeers, of yeah. um, reindeers in there. So and I'm Bambi. going to. Oh yeah, now I'm going to unfold it because I can't see what's underneath. Yeah, underneath. Exactly. Oh, there's a fox over there as well. I haven't seen the fox. Yeah. So then I can cut this one to nine and a half. If you do have um, a square ruler, you could use it at this point. Yes. So, so you're going to cut one. two with the two and one with the one. So then either now I could make it different, but then I'm going to be decapitating oh no. it, or do as you suggested yeah, and line that up. So we're cutting roughly the same area yes. there. I mean, it doesn't have to be spot on. It's not like you're going to be matching no, trees, no. but you don't want to have four sets of reindeers on one. and. Half sets on the other, no, three and a half exactly. sets on the other, whatever. Yeah, exactly. So that's two. So then I've only got, you know, that's just a little yeah. strip there. So I think some t sometimes fussy cutting can waste a lot of fabric, but when you're using yeah. larger pieces like this, you yeah, really, exactly. you really Yeah, it'd be not. different if you were cutting hexes round those uh, reindeers. You'd be wasting a lot of fabric then, wouldn't you? Yes. You would, yeah. Now you want him in the middle of this. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. And I want to keep this selvage with a little bit extra. Why? Right. To make into something else. When, when I, I keep selvages that have pretty prints on. Right. And I always cut a little bit extra of the fabric, partly so I can remember what it was. And also because depending on what you're going to do with this, you might want to see part of the print. And also, it's got the. You're just copying on. your friend, don't you? Made the dress out. You made the, the dress. Yeah, um, I don't think that's ever going to be me. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you're thinking of starting into dressmaking, wouldn't you? That'd be a difficult. So one to I'm start going with. to try. I'm going to try. She's got um, Jennifer Taylor's book. She's going to make one of the dungaree dresses. I, I am. Yeah. Jennifer Taylor's dress. You helped me pick, didn't you? Yeah. We're going to change it a little bit. We'll do a different neckline now. Yeah. So, but that she does explain all of that in a yeah. book handily. So perfect for a beginner like me. Dressmaker, I mean. <laughs> so there we go. So you can just see, I've I just tried to get it so they're, you know, I'm going to have about the same either side yeah. of the edges of the deers there. And then we've got our three Centrals. central squares. And I'll put that in your trolley ready to take home for your selvage dress. Thank you very much. Got any questions for Lucy? Obviously, just. Um, Web chat them in or email them in. Yes. So now I'm just cutting. I've cut the strips um, to make the border part right. for the blocks. Yeah. But I'm just going to cut. I'm thinking about the edge part with the strips that we're going that we're right. going to do. Oh, so that bit there yeah. is a separate section. The bit with the stripes That's on the end is a separate section. section. Yeah. But I do like to have there, all my that bit there. Yeah. Get all my cutting oh. out done. Oh, it's a still. It's a still. still sorry. So we're going to, we'll make the end section and then I'll do the um, block. Now the graphics on the screen there, £41.45, they're for that block that Lucy's already made, that one there. And then the, the one that Lucy's using is completely sold out, remember? Right, okay. Okay. So um, with this part, this one is um, five and a half by five, 16, 15. Have you not read this book before? Shall I get <laughs> yes, my glasses? Yes, I just can't remember which, which bit it is. So a fabric a rectangle, five and a half by 16. And then you trim it back after, that's why I was confusing, see? So you have to okay. trim it back to Okay, so you've jumped ahead, have you? Yes, yeah, so well, I'm just going to get the cutting done, and I think I'll do that bit first for the board. All right, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So 
in the book, the border section was made using bias tape. Yeah, are we doing those end bits first? Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to do yeah. the end yeah. bits first. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference yeah. which order you do it in. It's going to come together the same way. Yeah. Um, so in the book, it, she's used um, fusible tape right. and, and um, bias, you know, right. made bias Yes, bias binding, but there's no reason tape. for it to be bias binding because it's on the straight, isn't no. it? Yes, yes. So you don't need to do it that way. And um, I've come up with a just a quicker um, method. So rather than making lots and lots of bias tape, I'm just going to use um, the handy bonder web. So I've decided that this is going to be my background um, panel. Right, OK. At the two ends. Yeah, so this is five and a half by 16. And then the strips on top, I'm going to cut from the um, orange, because they'll make nice. Yes. And it's nice, nice to use the grenadine. Nice to use the patterned one, I think, as the, as the little strips. So for this, to try and remember these, what I did. These, are you making these? Yes. They're so 15. I need... Oh, for the little strip strips. Those, yeah, because yeah. I'm doing it slightly different. So right, I've okay. cut a square that is 11 by six and a half. Right. There we go. Of this. That's not bonder web, though. Y yes, it, well, it's a similar. It's, it's, it's the light one. It's a similar thing. It's a fusible glue. <laughs> that's the, that's the iron-on. Light, light and heat. Yeah. heat no, and no. Light that's the, um, that one is. That's yeah, the, that's the... Pressing, pressing that cloth, thing. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm going to use. There you go. This is what we're selling, the bonder web here. That's what you get in your packet, 1.2 metres of it there. Right. But you're, what's this you're using, then? It's, a, it's the same... It's another one that we sell that I had some at home. Oh, OK. <laughs> Have we got it's that the in same stock, thing. then? It's called light and something, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. I always, okay. forget, what, I always forget the names of All right, But they do the same job, do It's you? the same oh, Look thing, on the website. Yeah. Look on the website if you want that, if you prefer yeah. that one. So... Yes, go on. By doing this, I'm actually using um, an awful lot less fabric yes. than... Um, bias binding. Yeah. Making bias binding. I also, I really... Because I, I, bias binding is made for going round curves and going round, you know, edges and things like that, necklines and things. So I don't know why she'd choose to do bias binding as well, a strip. Well, I mean, you do you use it a lot in... You do use it in quilting, but generally you do use it when you want it, something like curves. a bind Yes, or, exactly. You know, um, it doesn't have to something be. like that. I suppose no. sometimes bias binding looks lovely when you cut a certain fabrics on the bias because you yes. get a different look. But this... Yeah. The spots that you've used there and, and the um, orange you're going to use here. I think it's because it's, you know, the method of making, you know, if you've yeah. already made but it. But why bother um, if you can be straight? But why bother? Yeah. And she does say you can cut it um, straight and that you fold the edges yes, in. Yes, so you make it like a bias binding. Yes, but, you know... You didn't do that I either. just don't have time for things like okay. <laughs> You can do. So, so you can make straight binding like bias binding yes. to do this. Yes, if you've got the time to do it, it yeah. you know, you can do it. And some people, because... Well, I'll get to it, but you can do this raw reg or not. Yes. Um, I quite like raw reg. I think it's quite fun, and I like the sort of texture of it over time. Um, but we'll come to that in a minute. So all I'm going to do is fuse the... Um, Light and fusible, heat so fusible thingy um, onto the fabric. Oh, really, do Yes, I need the mat. Right, now, but you also need to use the Teflon. Yes. This is where I always say, use the Teflon... Um, and don't do what I did the other day and do it the wrong way and stick it to the sheet. Yes. Right, let me just get this out. <laughs> Sorry, you've surprised me with that one. Which is easy. You see, it is easily done. Yeah. You're not concentrating. <laughs> now, you see, what I would do... Yes. Well, would you like to do it, then? No, no, no I'm just no, going to show no. you what All I right, do. you show me. I do it like this. Put the sheet down first. Oh, OK. Then your fabric. This is a brand-new sheet, that's why it's got creases in it. Then you put your fusible, fusible stuff on. Oh, come on. 
cut see, it a bit short. It's a bit shorter because I don't like it going to the edges. Yeah. Then I'd fold that over. Oh, yes, you make your little sandwich. Then... I'd press it. Yeah. So this way, if any of the glue comes off the paper, it doesn't go onto your iron and it doesn't go onto your ironing board. Be careful, though. This Teflon sheet gets incredibly, hot. incredibly hot. But so useful, because so many times I've, you know, I've put it the wrong way round or... Yes. OK. Now... Oh, no, I've done it... <laughs> I've done it perfectly. The one time I want to make a mistake. <laughs> So it's stuck beautifully, but if any of the glue had come off there, it would be on the cloth, not on your iron or on your ironing board. And then when this cools down, you just peel it off. Yeah. OK, so... OK, I'll show you in the next hour the Teflon sheet, cos I can't get the graphics up. Then from that, we're going to cut half-inch strips. OK. So they are... You want to be accurate, because if it's not straight, when you come to place them on, you'll really notice, you know. Yeah. The one thing I need to say here is this linear print, it's a print and it goes all over the place. So don't put your lines... And I've just managed to cut that one wrong, haven't I? I'm <laughs> concentrating. Yeah. Don't, don't cut it on the lines of the print because they go all over the place. Use, it, use your ruler. Half what are you trying inch. to do? Well, I'm checking now. Is it half an inch or is it three quarters? I can't remember. I think it's That's half, wider than it? the one you've got on here. Yeah, so it's half. So I'll just cut Not that half one. of that. No, it's half an inch, yes. the strip. Yeah. yeah, I'll just cut that one wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Luckily, you we can don't... make them whatever size you want, can't you? Well, you could. No, well, you oh, could no, do. Well... I mean, you can, but for the pattern. Um, she gives you the measurements oh, okay. so that you're getting it all yeah. um, nice and straight. But we need 11. So I'd have to cut myself one more if I was going to do both sides of it. You're making the whole thing, aren't you? Well, I might get time, you never know. Yeah. Not at the rate I'm going to do. <laughs> Today. But that you can't rush, you know... You no, there's no point in rushing it. You can't rush, rush it, it and you can't really rush um, cutting, certainly. Oh, yes, well, you could have made the one that we've already cut smaller, but I've thrown it on the floor now. Yeah. Do you know what you could do that would be helpful? What, take the backs off. Take the backs off while I'm, um, while I'm doing it. Oh, I might not need to pin, actually. It might just Okay, I think, it. yeah, it, I didn't find it too tricky. Now, on Bonderweb, when you peel it off, you see, it doesn't look like that. It's got... Oh, no, it hasn't. You might have to give it another go. Has any of it? So I'd never used this one before. It's more like... A, that. This one is more, it's more like a sort of a web. It's like a webbing. Yes. And it's a, it's a bit sort of... It, it feels a bit sort of like, a, like a, some sort of a gel okay. webbing. I've lost what, how many I've cut out now. I'll just keep going. <laughs> just keep going, girl. <laughs> yeah. So it's there quite, we go, there we go. It's quite fun, though. It's sort of like making fabric chips. <laughs> chippy chips. Got it. I've had chippy chips for ages. That's it. There's one next door to um, the Waitrose in Ulster, and every time you walk out of Ulster, you just smell the chippy chips next door. Oh, yeah. Oh, chips and gravy. <laughs> well, Paul's saying chips and ketchup. I haven't had chips and gravy for ages. I always used to have one when we were up north when I was at school. Oh, chips and curry sauce. Chips and curry sauce, yeah, they had that at my school. Now, you don't get a bowl because it's in paper, isn't it? They wrap them in paper. How many of these am I doing for you? Um, well, we need 11. I've probably stopped there. That's <laughs> what I think I've done enough. You'll be lucky. But we will keep going because... It, what's nice about the pattern is she she um, gives you the measurements of where to position them. Now, so, I'm just showing you, right, Lucy's, what Lucy's trying to do is pull the binding off from the corner. If it won't come off, if you get a pin and just score down the paper... That one's not done. You see, just score the paper and then you can just take it off like that and it's left the glue on the fabric. Oh, no, there you go. 
Hang on. There you go. And that's really so we... helpful when you've got something like a circle. You know, if you're doing a plique and you've got something like a circle that's tricky to, you know, to, to uh, pull off. Yeah. Have you not thrown too many of these on the floor? Because I've got to use them. Say that again. You th what no, they're all paper. On paper. No, the, that one's not quite stuck. Yeah, I'll go and do bundles in a second. How many do you want? One, two, three, eleven. Four. But are they cut in half? Is that two? No, no. Oh, you need eleven in total. Yeah. Uh, Joanna in Cheshire loved watching you two sewing together so much. Eight o'clock that I was late for <laughs> school run. <laughs> Sorry. That was a perfect point, John. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. It was a perfect point that I got, wasn't it, eventually? It was. Um, yeah, well, after I showed you how to do it. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Janet in Bristol. Uh, what a treat on my birthday. Oh, Janet, 62 Aww. today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Same age as her, Janet. Far, uh, she says, education and fun all in one. Love it. Enjoy you both. Fantastic. Right. And now, you see, this, this, I, this is different to Bond Web. I'll just show you yeah. this, the glue on this. It's like a lattice. Like a, can you, I don't know if you can see that. It's like a lattice of glue. Can you see there? Yeah. Right, OK. OK, so I might need to press some of these. OK, just like go and do the bundles. Yeah, and no, I'll press do those. Yeah. Most popular one. Oh, well, hang on, that one's sold. That one's sold out. Right, the rake is the most popular one now. This is raked... Uh, this is uh, Kaif Raked Cobalt, it's called. £42.95, pence. so what you get, you get a metre of the rake, which is the cobalt and the green. You get a metre of the blue linear, and you get a metre of the navy blue. And you get the book collect for £42.95. Now, I had this yesterday, didn't I, this K-Fabric? We love it. I had the blue and white one yesterday, didn't I? Now, oh, oh, oh hang on. Right, hang on a second. I've been saying you get a metre of everything. No, you get more of this. Oh, just as well we wafted, isn't it? Oh, I do apologise, I've been telling you the wrong thing. You get a metre and a half of your main fabric. You get a metre of Riviera blue. There you go, so you get... No, well, I should have... I should have oh, there you go. So you get a metre of the Riviera, Riviera, you get half a metre of the blue, which is why you had some left... More left of others, isn't it? Because you had more. And then a metre and a half. So a metre... Yeah, a metre and a half, a metre, and half a metre makes three. Um, and so that's... I'll get to Amy to fold that one up for me in a second. So it'll be the same with all of them. I do apologise, do apologise. Oh, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Well, hang on, then. I'll tell you... Because it's different, then. So in this one, you get a metre and a half of the linear... We need to check this, Paul. Yeah, so this one, you get a metre and a half of the linear, a metre of the... So they're all different. So they're all different. So you get a... I do apologise about this. I do apologise. So a metre and a half of the linear, a metre of the mountains, and half a metre of the spots is what you get in that one. Then Anna Maria, you get a metre and a half of the linear. You get a metre of the Anna Maria and half a metre of the solid. I do apologise about that. Uh, and you get the book in it as well, you get the book in as well. I do, do, do apologise. So those of you who've already bought your um, Bluebell Wood in Autumn, you, get, you do get a metre... So, so you get a metre and a half of the Bluebell, so you've, that's right, a metre of the pumpkin and half a metre of port, but that's already sold out. Now, remember, if you want the mountains by the half metre, we do do that as well. Yeah, we'll do the wadding when we get to the quilting bit. Uh, £6.50 for half a metre. OK. Can you get Amy to sort that out for me? Thanks. Right, how are you getting on here? I'm all right. I've just realised I'm following the instructions and not my own method. So I'm cutting these back down because we don't want them as long or they're going to go... They're going to be wider than the border. So when I, whatever measurement I said to cut these at, do it at five and a half. So it should be five and a half by yeah, you 11. Said that. Oh, OK. OK, because otherwise they're going over. Are you with me? Yeah. Because I'm not following the book. I'm, I forgot. It's only like a four... You only did an inch or three quarters of an inch. Yeah, yeah, much, yeah. It's only a little bit. So... OK. Um, Sorry if we're confusing you today. 
do to just follow the book. Yes. <laughs> Ignore me. Follow the book. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to lay that um, underneath because it's quite likely at this point. Yes. So you want to be doing this on your ironing board. I'm just going to move that out of the way slightly. I need the ruler. Right. And then what you're going to do is line this up and she gives you the measurements for where you want to position these, OK? So you've right. taken all the strips off of yes. your... The backing of the fuse. So the first one is going one and a half um, inches from the edge. Okay, and then we're doing it every three quarters of an inch. So every three quarters of an inch from there, that's where we're going to lay. What's that doing? Lay the strips on. And you just want to be mindful of lining up the tops and bottoms so you're getting them on straight. Yeah. Okay. You could almost do with two rulers, one at the top and one at the bottom. Yes, to mark you could. Well, do what you that. could use is, um, you know, our pencils. You could you could mark yeah. one just of the mark, lines. A and... Mark dots. Yes. At the top and bottom, or something like that. Yeah. Well, it's going to be very dramatic, isn't it? The. So, um... Yes. Lovely and grenadine on. autumnal, isn't it? Yes. Now, I did think as I was doing it, yeah. you could, you know, start doing different oh. designs and like things bamboo if you wanted shoots. something. Oh, do you know what? Yeah. I tell you, that would look lovely on the Anna Maria Horner because the linear on that has got um, the kind of, like, the, the, the print in it. And it's the pale green. It's the, like, the lichen oh, colour, yeah. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it's be lovely, really that lovely. one. So you just keep going all the way along. And that's where this, like, the Teflon sheet comes in really handy, because yes. you do go, if you've I'm gone a thinking, bit I'm thinking, though, what you could do is you could make this one the background, the spot, and then you could use the linear print doing the funny lines and everything if you wanted. So it's a, a contrast end, but you could do the linear prints going in funny lines with that one. Yes. Look like bamboo on that one. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. That's reminding me of Tenko, the one you're doing now. Do you remember Tenko? No. No. Do you remember Tenko? I don't know what Tenko... What is it? It was a TV series with Stephanie oh. Beecham and Stephanie Powers and, and it was all, they were all the ladies in a prisoner of war camp. All oh, right. It was very big. Oh. I must have been a child, obviously, when that was on. I've never heard of it. Very sorry. Mike's heard of it, Ginger Mike. How old are you, Ginger Mike? So he's much younger than you. Well, he probably watches more telly. He's very artistic, is Ginger Mike. He is he's it? got an award-winning director of films, you know. Yes. Yes. You, he's in you, some you, as well. I couldn't find that. I was going to watch a film that he was in. I couldn't find it. Um, I never got you there. You're going to watch a four, film with six, Mike in it? Eight, ten. He's in a film. Oh, Mike. No, no, he directed a film. Yes, I know, but he's in one as well. Oh, only as an extra. Well, yeah. Well, even so. He's in the one that was filmed around the corner here. That my friend Dan yeah. was the costume supervisor on. Oh. Yeah, Steve Mil he wants to make Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg, he keeps saying. Oh, does he? Dan, I've got yeah. to trim that one. Let's get the scissors. Yeah. Dan does all the jobs that I did. He was my assistant when I was in films. And I said to him, you can just borrow my kit, because as a supervisor, you have to turn up with everything, mm -hmm. you know, at sewing machines and everything. So I said, well, you just borrow my kit while I have a year off. And then I never went back to it and he just kept it. And then I said to him, what about my kid? And he went, oh, I don't know where it is now. Oh. And I was like, oh, OK, then. <laughs> right. So, carefully... Yes. We're going to fuse this into place. Now, th th this is the pressing cloth that we're using in this one, the Teflon one, which is the one I always use. You, but if you... The other one earlier won't be big enough to do this. The one earlier, you could do it, but you'd have to do it in two sections. It wouldn't be big enough to be able to fit the whole panel and it. This Teflon, I won't need it in the next hour, but I'll put the graphics through in the next hour. I wonder why it won't let you load it. And that, you do need to be careful when you're doing this. Don't do what I did at home, because I sort of moved oh, it. Oh, no. And I hadn't, yeah, and so then you get not straight lines, but yes. you, what you're really wanting is everything to be... Yeah. See, now, is, you see, you that's, that's, that there has saved your iron because the glue, there's a little bit of glue on there. There's quite there's a few yeah. bits from my yeah. dodgy cutting. There we go, anyway. You're only making one, aren't you? 
I'm only doing one. Yeah, yeah but you would need to do two if you're yeah, doing the whole um, runner, obviously. So then that then becomes your... Um, panel at the end. Panel at the end. And nothing okay. arrived at the pool. So I was saying earlier how you've got a couple of um, different options with this. So if you're doing it using this method, you could now applique those down yes. if you wanted to. Right. So you might want to do it with an invisible stitch or a coordinating what thread. What did you do? I, I didn't applique. I just quilted. Oh, OK, OK, OK. So uh, I would do a satin stitch down the edge of each Yes, place. you could do a satin stitch down the edge, any kind of, uh, um, that, you that's know, that's exactly just going to hold those in place and, and um, cover those raw right. edges if you want to. So it's more stitching. But yeah. So I've left them as they are raw, and what I've done is quilted a decorative stitch over the top of them. So if you can flip that to the back, there you'll be able to see. So I've done it... Um, so you did zigzag quilting yeah, on I've that Yeah, I've just one. done... It, no, it's like a, it's a decorative stitch slightly different than a zigzag. Oh, oh yes, yes, sorry, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. And, like and a wishbone. I used, yeah, and I used three different um, stitches throughout the thing. So they do end, and I did think you could run a line... I could have done a straight line along yes, there, but I quite yeah. liked it not... Because you see those... Oh, yeah, they don't end They either. don't end either, so it actually works quite well. Oh, it's a bit... It could be well. a very boring dinner party if somebody's going, oh, let's just see the back of the table <laughs> runner. <laughs> But if they're a quilter, they might. Yeah, they might. <laughs> so, so we'll go back to making the block. Yes. Yeah. So shall I do my? Do Doesn't do really matter. We're only going to get time to do oh, one. Oh, all right. Anyway, we'll just we? do one. Um, we'll and I've it. already cut the pieces. So this is essentially like a um, darker, like a courthouse steps. Okay. So you're just going to build that up. And the other thing you could do if you wanted was, you know, mix these up. Yeah. It is a two-colour, you know, it's yeah. meant to be a two-colour, but there's no reason well, you dramatic, can't do, yeah, do the different ones. And then with that, with the pop of orange there as yeah. well. Beautiful, isn't it? Have you cut orange borders as well? Yes, I have. Just yeah. let's have a look at it with the orange boards very quickly, even though it's sold out. Yeah. Well, but... Shall I do one up here with the orange? Oh, I'll do it. You carry on doing what you're doing and okay. I'll do an orange Okay, they're board, just there. Yeah. So all I'm going to do is sew um, with a quarter inch seam, top and bottom. And what is lovely about this, there isn't a whole, other than those little strips, there isn't really a whole lot of cutting um, to be done. No. And everything that you're cutting, you are cutting from um, strips, so that's nice and easy. Yeah. And then, um, and then the piecing is really ever so straightforward. So uh, this is a great project for beginners. Yeah. I'm just showing you what it would look like in the orange, in the grenadine, if you framed it in the orange. Look, 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 look. See, that's it. If, if you were going to do it in the... Because, obviously, we've not got time to show all three. So, Lucy's doing the one that's in the port. This would be the one in the grenadine, but, obviously, they would be the same at the end there. But what right. I would do then, I think, is I would have I would have the orange one in the centre because that's going to stand out yeah, a yes, lot more. Yes. And have I think it's nice. Whatever you've used in the background there on that edge, yeah. it's nice to have the I same colour. I think this colour. is dramatic. Yes, very that's dramatic. That's what and it, it does make it more striking, yeah. and then it makes that. Yeah. Doing all those little strips worthwhile. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So now the bundle that Lucy's using is sold out, I'm afraid. The one that's the, on the panel at the front here is called the Ast Altitude. Altitude for £41.45. and pence. You get three metres of fabric and you get the booklet. And then the, the uh, graphic running across the bottom of the screen is the Kaith, which is the most popular, which is Cobalt, which you get the um, Kaith rake fabric, the linear and the... Oh, do you need the iron back out? Sorry. Sorry. The linear and the navy blue there. Check out your baskets. So now most of the time I would say, if we get to a stage with something like this with a log cabin or a courthouse steps, I would say press um, away from the square. But because that's our feature panel, I'd rather have that slightly raised, so I'm going to press these um, seams towards the square. OK. OK. You can see it just gives it a tiny bit of um, relief. 
Yeah, I'm good. Just watching. And watching, then I'm learning. put my borders on either side. Well, could you get the other machine out, couldn't we? And I could have done the orange one for you. You could have. Next time we'll try and remember that. Now, uh, uh, I'd like that put in the shift report, please. The director <laughs> saying, well, the last one was successful, wasn't it, John? It's fine. It's fine. I, I, I don't forget. We need to do like a four hours, don't we? Oh, that's we? banter. Two hours. That's banter <laughs> telling me I'm rubbish. Banter. <laughs> um, I can't remember what I was saying then for before. Oh, I know what the question was. Throw You're sewing that in white or cream? Yes. Would you normally in real no. life? No. Just keeping things simple. That's what's in the machine. Okay. Um, to be honest. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. It. Unless you're doing a plique or something, that it's completely hidden within your seam. You really aren't going to see it, even if I'm, you know, I have to tug very hard, I'm not going to, yeah. um, to, to, see that, uh, to see that thread. So um, if you're working with paler fabrics, obviously you don't want to be using a dark thread because um, that would, might become more noticeable and show through on the other side, but... I, I generally use a neutral for piecing, um, yes. and I usually, when I'm at home, use a um, stick with greys. So I just use I have a light grey and a dark grey, and then whatever fabric I'm using. Oh, okay. If it's light, I go with a light grey, dark, okay. dark grey. Now, um, I noticed at the beginning you did a reverse stitch when the eight o'clock show. We weren't doing reverse stitches. You might not have been, but I was. <laughs> Were you? I always do. I think you'll find you didn't on your first one that I watched. Yes, because if you remember, I was saying when you're piecing them, <laughs> that to stop it getting eaten by the... Um, Which your machine did. ...machine, you want to start further on and then go backwards okay. and forwards. Well, that's me told. That's you told, yes. So, um, then I'm going... can give that a press. Do it yourself, I'm And then, all right, fine then. <laughs> So this side, I'm just going to go with what's easier, which yeah. is away. Does it matter which... Oh, no, because you were saying press it in earlier because you, that lifts the centre square. It just lifts it, but then if I press that side in, I'm going to get quite a lot of bulk and I yeah. don't want that, so... You can do if you want to. But you can see how if I'd press the other side away as well, that would be just going in, whereas now, at least there, it's yeah. uh, standing out a little bit. So I just need to trim this one back. Right. So five and a half by 15. So we'll end up with an inch either side of um, the stripes. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to interrupt you one second. Yes. Somebody just emailed in saying if they missed the under 15 pound hour. Yes, you did. But you can still go and see what's left by going to the website, www.sendquarter.com. Right, and all you have to do is you have to go to the watch, watch the show today there, click on watch today's show, and then underneath... Now, the things that are sold out won't be there, but anything that's still available that we've had on today's show is all... If you just scroll, scroll back... Oh! 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 Right, pink one, people haven't checked out the basket, so there's still some of the pink, pink boxes available. They were sold out, you need to check out your basket. If you just scroll up to the top just to show people where we actually are, on the, on the uh, page. You see, there we are, you see. So it's just underneath there. It's just underneath. You have to press watch. Then you go down and you can see everything that we've played from the whole show, from the whole day. And that stays there until tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock or until they sell out. OK? Sorry, Lucy, I just you that. That's all right. I've just managed to oh, break that thread. So I'll just... Oh, we could just done it while I was re -thread talking. Rethread it. Let's <laughs> try it. Shall I do the bundles again? Final time through the bundles while she's rethreading the machine. Just the three bundles left. Most popular is Kaif. Well, the first one that Lucy's using sold out. Obviously, that was the most popular. Then the next popular is Kaif. This is called the Cobalt. You, now, you, what you get is you get a metre and a half of the Kaif, a metre of the Linear and half a metre of the Navy Blue and the booklet to make ten delicious table runners. £42.95, right? 
Anna Maria Horner. Now, this way, you get a metre and a half of the linear printing. I think it's lichen. You get a metre of the Anna Maria high climber in ice and half a metre of the green spectrum solid, plus the booklet, £40.95. Right? And then the last one is this one, the one that Lucy's already made. This one, you get a metre and a half of the linear print, a metre of the mountains and a half a metre of the spot on, plus the booklet, Make Table Runners, 10 Delicious Quilts to Sew, £41.45. Right, now, this one has more in the basket than the other two. So as soon as you start checking out on that one, then uh, that will be number one most popular. And also, if you don't want the kitchen, remember, you can buy this by the half metre, the uh, altitude fabric, by the half metre. It's lovely, isn't it? Dashwood. Uh, 6.95, I think. Oh, 6.50, 6.50. That'd be nice in pink, wouldn't it? Anyway, OK, 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 OK. And there we go. So that's the, that's the start of the... Uh, uh, but, and then what you do is you then sew the other three panels and the end... One of these, stripey one of these at the end. Exactly. And if your table wasn't that long, you could just add another strip there, or if you wanted it for a side table or something, you know, you, you don't have to yes, necessarily yeah. do all the box. Oh, do you so know what? Nice. They make... They make the, um, they're a bit big, I think. If you did slightly narrower here... Cut that in half, mm -hmm. that'd make a lovely table mat, place mat, wouldn't it? It would, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? So if you... If just, mm. yeah. thing is, how many could you make? You could only make three or four, though, couldn't you? After the fabric, that's the problem. Um, no, I think, now, you would, I think you would get... Did you... You then quilted it, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so I quilted it. So I've put all the um, blocks together. Um, the backing fabric you need to um, piece. Oh, OK. Let's so you're quickly. cutting... Um, Two oh. lengths of the width of the fabric and piecing it oh, because yes. it's just, it's a bit too long um, to do. Do you know what, though? You could make more squares if you used the stash fabric that you've got yes. at home as your backing, yeah, couldn't you? Absolutely. If you didn't use the backing. Because the backing on this quilt, I would say, isn't the most important because it's table and you it's can table put pots runner. and yes. things on top of it. Doesn't matter. So um, I'd save that fabric and make more squares, I think. Yes. So you patch that, you patch the backing, yeah. so you make your sandwich. So, made my quilt sandwich. Yeah, you use this used... batting, the warm yeah. and white batting, baby size, £8.95. Warm and white, which is one of my favourite. What did I say? Yes, warm Oh, yes, sorry, I thought, I, said, yeah. I thought you were going, no, warm and yeah. white. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Never do that to you. <laughs> and then what I did for the um, quilting, in the book she's done um, free motion quilting, yes. which is beautiful. And something like this kind of design lends itself really well to, um, you know, uh, lots of quilting. Now, and, do, and can I be really motion. rude here? I don't no, like what don't she's... be rude. I don't like what she's don't done. Don't be rude. Well... I, I'm sorry, Amanda Murphy, graphic designer and art director, before we discovered quilting. Terrible. Um... I think it lends itself to what you've done and not squiggly. OK, well, personally, squiggles that's are my nice. personal, but personal, then personal. But then hers don't have the prints on, do they? So the squiggles work quite nice. And, it, it, you know, leaf designs and things like that are quite traditional. That's hard. And They're she's hearts. made it... Mm. Well, no, it's like a... Because that's like oh, a no, wreath, yeah, yeah, and then it, those, it, these it, are like it, the leaves. It, but it. traditionally, they're much more um, sort of scroll light yes yeah. and these are more rounded and modern yeah. um but you, obviously the quilting you can do whatever you like yes. with it but you don't want to do too much quilting do you because you don't want it to be bouncy you don't want it to be like a duvet in the middle of your table do you well no but it wouldn't because the what because you'd only get that if you're using a very uh, high loft wadding right this is a very flat oh okay um, oh so wadding. that's why we've so used it that would be wadding. fine okay. yes um, so you can quilt it more densely. What it will mean, it will just make it stiffer, which actually, for a table runner, is a it's good right. thing. It's right, yes. What yeah. I went you don't want one... So sometimes you have quilts no, that you are don't squinchy, want, don't yeah, you? Yeah, but you'll get that if you're having... If there's space in between your quilts, right. then you, get more, you tend okay. to get more yeah. of that. Um, so, you know, any sort of free-motion design would look really nice. Um, I think for this one, leaves would look beautiful, you know, beautiful. Yeah. You could do falling leaves or something like that. I'm seeing triangles myself. Isn't that okay. weird? OK, yeah. Might be because I used some triangles on there. You've got it in your mind. So when I did this one... You're going, what? <laughs> when I did this one... I don't one, know your Mark puts up with you. Mark, if ever you need somewhere to come and stay... 
You're saying that now because you've seen a picture of you, Mark. <laughs> That's why. <bad. laughs> That's nothing to do with it. Right, go on, go on, go on, go on. So, I have a very handsome husband. Um, so, this one's got... It, uh, is like peaks, you know, this is a depth That's of like casualty, on the machine, the so casualty. it does look a bit like yes. that, doesn't it? Like a heartbeat. Um, so I just did that um, along there and just measured um, the intervals yeah, so they're yeah, evenly yeah. spaced. And then, no, they're, they're evenly spaced and then that one's in the middle. That's yeah. what I did. And then this one is another decorative stitch um, with triangles. And I... I Did I mark...? Yes, I marked it. So I just marked a crease. I used a Hera marker. Right. Um, to measure it away from the central square. Yeah. Um, and then, and if you're, if you're new to quilting and your piecing isn't completely precise, I would always, so don't measure from the outside in, measure from whatever is your focus, right. measure out from there because that's what becomes more noticeable. Yes. So then if you're trimming it off and it isn't, you know, exactly precise, it won't really matter because people will be looking, See that that's they'll exactly focus on that yes. and that's what they will yeah. see. Yeah. And then with the um, stripes, I used a decorative stitch to go across. So even if they, these did fray, it's going to be minimal. Yes. Um, because I've got those stitches holding them in place there. So um, that one on this machine, it's, it's wide. So it's yeah. a nice wide stitch, but you could uh, zigzag that or you could free motion. In the book, she actually um, did the background, you know. Yes, yeah, she did squiggles in yeah, there, Yeah, did the she? squiggles in the, in the background, but I just thought it'd be a bit different to yeah. go on the stripe. Um, and then I've machine, a machine. Uh, so you use the mountains to bind it with, but again, you can use whatever you want to bind yes, it with. Yes, which I thought you? was a bit different because normally you do something dark, you know, you tend yes. to do like a, bar, a darker um, binding. Well, yeah, like the one behind you, you've done a deep purple yes. binding. Yes, yeah, so it's like so a yeah. frame yeah. Um, for it, but I just thought it's such a pretty print and actually it works really nicely getting those all those different colours and carrying them all the yes. way round. Now, this is a completely off the piece question now. Okay. Would you ever quilt over a binding? Would you ever, once you put a binding on, mm -hmm. would you ever then put a decorative stitch over there or not? Um, not with my machine. Right. Personally, no. Right. Um, I don't like going through lots and lots of layers. Oh, OK. But that's sort of practically you, why you don't do it. Yeah, because going over that... It'd be a bit I tough. think it would just be hard to keep your stitches straight. OK. However, what you can do is hand... I hand sew bindings yes. when I have time. If I'm quilting at home, I hand sew um, my bindings yeah. on. I don't tend to do it by machine. Um, and but what and what you can do then is like the thicker thread I was using yesterday, for lay. Where, where I quilted. Um, that you can use We're that, that into. to stitch the binding, and that gives a really nice effect because then you've got a hand. It's hand oh, stitched. Oh yes. Um, around which looks lovely. Because so. you, you all do, you, you, not your, you do the quilting while it's a sandwich, don't you? And yes. then you cut it down and then you put the binding yes. on. I, gen I, I generally do, but occasionally I want to add some quilting into something. And if I'm going to do that, I'll usually hand, yes, it'll be yeah. hand quilting. So Brilliant. it doesn't matter. But you need to get your the majority, at least, of your, of your quilting done before you bind only because it could distort yeah. um, further. OK, brilliant. When are you in next? Next Tuesday. Well, you're in a lot at the moment, aren't Let's you? think about Am it. Am I in on Tuesday? Next Tuesday. I don't know. No, Sunday and Monday, me. Oh. Paul's in. Paul's in on Tuesday. OK. And do you know what you're doing yet? Um, you yes, on, uh, yes, I do. Is it exciting? It's, yes, it's a very lovely quilt. Oh, I'm very God. excited about it, actually. New fabric. Oh! I don't know what I'm allowed New to say. New fabric without me. Sorry. That's right. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed. Thank you. I'm going over to do ca uh, uh, thingy, thingy quickly. Oh, I've got ages. Thank you ever so much. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Good journey John. home, because you'll be gone you. when I come out, won't I? When I come. Right, the one that Lucy's used, the uh, altitude, you, you need to check out your baskets. I'm sorry to keep repeating, 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 but there's lots of you got this in your basket. Um, Please check out. Please, please, please check out. Now, what you get is you get a, a metre and a half of the... A metre and a half of the linear. You get a metre of the uh, mountains and you get half a metre of the spot on. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. For £41.45 pence plus the booklet, remember? £41.45 pence. So that one goes there. The other put them now. The one that's in the lead at the moment, but that's because most of you who are buying this have all checked out your baskets. 
This is the cobalt rake by raked by Kaif. You get now this one. You get a meter and a half of the Kaif fabric. You get a meter and a half of the Riviera linear, and you get half a meter of the navy blue, plus the booklet for forty-two pounds and ninety-five pence. There's the still. And then last but not least, the Anna Maria Horner. This is, um, I keep wanting to call it high society, but it's called social climber. Hi social climber in ice. Is this high? Oh, is it high climber? It might be one of them. I'm sure it's social climber. Uh, so you this one, you get a metre and a half of the linear in lichen. You get a metre of the Anna Maria and you get half a metre of the um, spectrum solid. Plus... The book. Now, very quickly, the, oh, no, no, let me show you this fabric as well. If you want to buy this fabric, because this is very popular, the Altitude Mountains fabric is available by the half metre, um, £6.50. £6.50. It's lovely. It's 100% cotton machine washable. Give us a call, 0800 112 44 33. .com if you want to just pop it in your basket, but you do need to check out. It's very, very important to check out. Um, now, the, now, don't go anywhere. Because the next hour, I need to explain. I know I, I'm, I'm doing a big, big, big pattern cutting show with a model. She, you know, Sheila the model, lovely Sheila the model, she's coming in. And I'm going to show you how to make a toile and fit it in the first hour and then create something for her to wear in the second hour, hopefully. This isn't that show, but this is a show where I show you how to take a, get a basic block from the book that I'm selling. And then from that basic block, how to manipulate the pattern into the shape for either a semicircular or a circular skirt. So I've got, and now I've got calico. We've got calico stock, which you've all been wanting, and it's fantastic weight, and it's really good value for money. So don't go anywhere. We will see you in three minutes from now for John Scott's workshop. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news, and share your own creations with us. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com, visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. So today we're going to be learning the prick stitch. Now, the prick stitch is very similar to a back stitch and they're basically very tiny stitches which are visible on the front of the fabric uh, and very long stitches on the back. So first of all, you need to start with the needle at the wrong side of the fabric, coming through to the front. And like I said, it's very similar to the back stitch where you're gonna go backwards rather than forwards. And you wanna make this stitch as tiny as possible. So taking a couple of um, th strands from the fabric itself. And then the length of your prick stitch could be entirely up to you. So I'm gonna make it quite a large one so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going through the fabric and then I'm gonna come back Again, taking a couple of strands from the fabric to come down. You want to keep these as even as possible as you're going across the line. So there we have our prick stitch. On Saturday, the 23rd of September, soft toy maker Joe Carter will be unpacking a trunk of cuddly creations. As well as showcasing some viewer favourites, she'll be trumpeting the arrival of an unforgettable new character. This adorable elephant toy can easily be made at home using Joe's complete kit. The kit comes in several colour options and features step-by-step -step instructions. So, if you're a seasoned toy maker or just a beginner, Joe's expert guidance will help you achieve a professional result. So join Derek Marks and Joe Carter as they unveil this brand new colourful character. Saturday the 23rd of September at 11am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78.
called John's Workroom, this. It's John's Workroom. I used to have a cutting table like this when I was at college. Never had one like that. Uh, the only time I've had a big table like this when Dulcie and I both lived at a house in Wimbledon Park called... Um, Polly's, it was Polly's house, it wasn't called anything, and she had a huge dining table, and I used to do freelance making from there. Anyway, waffling, waffling, waffling. I am going to show you how to manipulate patterns in a second, but I need to tell you, you've all been asking for calico, calico, where's the calico, when are we having calico, when's the calico coming in? It's here, it's here. Now, I've got loads of it, but when I brought a, a fabric very, very, a, the obsidian fabric very much like the calico, it sold out within, like, four minutes. So if you want calico, I've got it here now. I've got it here now. Now, here's the watch. Wait for the price. Wait for the price. Watch. Three, four, wait. One pound ninety-five half a meter. What now? Before you go, what? Look how wide it is. It's even wider. It's one hundred sixty-five centimeters. I think was it? Oh, one hundred sixty-two centimeters. One hundred and sixty-two centimeters, which I think oh, it goes off the end of my tape measure. One hundred sixty-two. So one hundred and fifty is sixty inches. So if we add. 12 centimetres, I think it's about five inches, isn't it? Yeah. So that makes it 60, just under 65 inches wide. So it's brilliant, it's brilliant. Now, obviously, with calico, you're not going to make clothes out of calico, are you? This, I love it, I love it. Oh, I love it, it's the smell of calico. If you're going to make twirls, if you're going to make... The thing is, I mean, we went through a phase when I was at college of making clothes in calico, because we were trying to be trendy and everything like that. You can use it for so many different things, can't you? Oh. Right, I, I said, right, I'll, I'll tell you now, I've got uh, hundreds of metres of this, right? There are so many of you put in your basket straight away. It's not what the show's about. I mean, I'm just showing you now, because I will be cutting some out of this in a minute. Plain calico fabric. Now, Paul, you've got the weight of it, haven't you, there? 150 GSMs, right? 150 GSMs. Uh, it's perfect. It's just the best, best, best calico. It's, it's not the heavy, 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 like, calico, like, um, you make sailcloth out of. And it's not the lightweight, flimsy, with open weave, like, muslin. It's a really, really good calico. OK. Right, OK. If everybody... Right. <laughs> when, when you... When, all right, right, sure, 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 sure. When you put it in... When you put it in your basket, we can't see how much you put in. If everybody who's on the, on the line of put it in their... Not on the line, put it in their basket, it's put a metre in, then it's all sold out. So it's that... Uh, we can only see... We can only see when, when you've checked out your basket how much you've actually bought. So each people... Each person... Right, OK. There's hundreds of, there's hundreds of you within the basket. 113 people in the basket. 121 people in the basket. I've... Right. So the people right now, I've got... To, oh, no, no, I can't even tell you who's checking out because it's going... Vidum, 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 vidum. Right, OK, now I will be coming back to that later because I, I need to cut something out of that. But I'll get Amy to cut that out later. Well, congratulations <laughs> if you got that. Oh, dear. Right, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show this book, right? Let's talk about this book, first of all. It's the Pattern Making Templates. Now, I know a lot of you are really, really frightened about pattern manipulation and drawing up your own patterns. When you get the hang of it, it's actually really simple. It's just you have to just use your, the, the logic side of your brain. Now, this, what's good about this book is when I trained, every time I made an, an outfit or an out, uh, something for somebody, a costume or an outfit, what you do is you measure the actor or the actress or the person who's commissioned you and you draw up a, what's called a basic block, which is... Well, I'll show you. This is a basic block, right? You draw up a basic block of that person's measurements, right? With ease, with ease, obviously. So, what it looks like is this. This is a basic block. OK? Now, normally... Uh, Gen I tell you, Jennifer uh, Mills and I do this whenever we... We draw up a basic block because there's, there's a whole... I'll bring it in one day. It's like, a, it's like doing a geometric drawing because you have to take half of this measurement, add an inch, do this drawing, do this down, and then you took the nape to back waist, you took the point to point, you do all of that sort of thing, and you end up with something like this. And this is what the centre back... This is what a back panel would look like of a whole body. I don't know if... I've drawn the dart in heavier, but if you look in... You can see the, the shape, actually. 
Um, Amy, get me, could you get me the, um, could you get me a thick pen? I'll colour it in. And anyway, this is the front. So this is this, well, let me go through it back. Right, this is the back. So you've got the centre back down here. You've got the back neckline here. Can you see, I wonder if you can see it on there. Just, you can just see it on there, can't you? OK, then the shoulder, then the back armhole, down to the waist. This is the dart, the waist dart in the back there. And then obviously it just goes straight down. The hip is here and it goes straight down into a skirt. Right? right, OK, and then this is your front. This is your front section here. So you've got a bust dart here, waist dart here. Is that, a, I need a fat felt pen like that, a Sharpie felt pen, please. Uh, and then... Um, I thought you'd be able to see these lines better in real life. And then, obviously, that's your straight of grain. And then you also have a block of how to draw up a sleeve, right? So this is a sleeve block. The back of a sleeve and the front of a sleeve are very, very different. Oh, I'm so, ever so sorry you can't see those. What I might do is I might get Amy to draw, to draw around those so, so you can see that better, and I'll bring that back later. The joy of this book, right, is you don't have to draw your own block. So if, as soon as you open up, uh, what, before you start, I'd read the book, obviously, but this is just for skirts and dresses. But what you do is, um, I Amy, you can do it for me. Just draw around the edge of those three patterns on there for me, because I haven't got time to do it now. Just draw around, the, see this line here? Just draw all the way around that line on, on, on all, see this? You must know this, because Janice must have these. Just draw the out, around the outside line of all three of those for me. Oh, she's looking ever so concerned. Right, OK, so what you need to do first is you need to go... This is all about your body block, because everybody has a personal block, right? What you need to do, the first thing you need to do is you need to measure yourself, right? Can we have a look at those a bit closer so you can see the sizes? Thank you. Um, you need to measure yourself. Now, this block book works in both uh, English sizes and American sizes. So what you need to do is when you've measured yourself, now these are very, very basic measurements. Look, bust, waist and hips, right? So if you are, say, a 38-inch bust, a 32-inch waist and a 42-inch uh, hip, you know in this book you're a size 14 in UK or a size 10 American. You can choose between whichever one you want, because obviously they sell the book in America as well. Now... Don't be thinking, it doesn't say how high you are, how tall you are, or anything like that. That's because we can, I'll show you now how to lengthen things. But this measurement here, the hip measurement here, now that is the largest, you do two hip measurements. Let's just say, you've got your hip bones here, and then you've got your, your hip, oh look, I've, I've come all untucked. And you've got your, the widest bit here. Now the widest bit there is usually eight inches down from your waist. Because when, oh, and when you measure yourself, Take your tape measure like this, right, and just tie it round your middle and it will find your natural waist. I'm wearing my jeans right down here, right? That's not my waist. That's my natural waist and it's much higher than you think it's going to be. So that's what you need to do before you do anything and all your measurements go from that waist there. So, but with this, as I say, you don't have to have measurements because you can, um, you just do it. So, what... Oh, very quickly. Calico sold out. Calico, oh, there's more people got the calico in their basket than we've got. Right, OK, so we'll get more in, we'll get more in, because when I do the show with Sheila, we'll have to have an awful lot more than that. Anyway, so you've decided that you're size 14 UK. Then what you do is the book is full of different styles of skirts, which I'll go through in a second with you. So what you need to do is you need to go to the one that you think you're going to make. So I'm thinking of making the semicircular skirt, right? So on the semicircular skirt, this one, this one, this one, right? Right, so it says which block you're working from. And it says that you're working from... Uh, oh, where is that? So it, it tells you which block you have to work from. I'm just trying to find out where it says. Oh, there, the darted dress block, right? The darted dress block. So what you then do is you go to... This is all explains about the block and everything like that, what a basic block is. Um, you then go, in the book, there are tiny URLs. Now, I didn't know what those meant, but it's like a website that you can go to. And you have the darted dress block with setting sleeves, the darted dress full bust block with setting sleeves, and then you also have one here for stretch fabrics, and that's the darkless, because you don't need to put darts in, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in stretch fabric. Right? And there's also sleeve blocks. So we know that for that 
skirt that we're doing, we need to download this block. So what you do is you go, I'm not gonna show it to you because you need to buy the book. <laughs> you go to this tiny URL thing and this is what comes up. You choose your size and this is what comes up and you print it. Now you have to choose what, don't do what, I got Jay to print mine up yesterday, right? And he was trying to save paper. So he said, oh, I'm having it printed on both sides. So I only use eight sheets of paper. And it was like, no, Jay, because I need to cut it out and stick it all together. So it all comes, has, has Amy done that thing for me? It comes as your basic block. So this is what it looks like. I'll show it to you in, in mini size here. This is what happens. Now, where these lines are, they're obviously where you just have to join lots of pieces together. But you just join, it tells you really easily. So you stick them together and it creates your basic block. So this, if I made that up in Calico, it would fit the size 14 that this book says it's gonna fit. Now, when I do my show with Sheila, I'm actually gonna show you how to fit a basic block and make a 12. Because once you've made, once you've made that basic block, you can make anything from, because you know that basic block is your size. So you can make any top you want, any uh, skirt you want, just by uh, manipulating the pattern, right? Just by manipulating pattern, you can do that. So you've then got, as, as Amy, can you ask Amy if she's ready with it? Um, so what you do is you start off with that basic block. I've just asked Amy to draw around the outside lines. It's what? Yeah, I need it. I'll have to move on then. I'll have to move on. So then what you do is you then take your basic block, and because we're making a skirt, right, you don't need the top half. So we've cut the top half off, and I've got the bottom half of a skirt here, right? So this is your centre back of your skirt. So if you were to make this up into four pieces, if you cut two of these and you cut two of those, right, you put your darts in, that would be a straightforward, straight skirt that would fit you, right? But obviously you could do your measurements because not everybody's hips are curved exactly like that. Not everybody goes evenly out like that. But it would make a straight, like pencil skirt almost. Almost a skirt. Knowing full well that this is a straight of grain, so you can always follow your straight of grain. Right, so I photocopied this to make it a bit easier so rather than having the book open all the time. I've decided to show you how to manipulate this straight skirt pattern into this. Right? So it's, stay with me, stay with me, because it's very, very easy. It looks more complicated than it is. If you want, if we have time, oh yeah, if we might have time, I might also do a full, full, full circle skirt as well. Marcia, um, Marcia used the uh, calico for a red work. It is beautiful red work, and I never see it at this price. Fantastic, thank you, same quarter. No worries, Marcia. Right, okay, so let's start with this. So this is a size 14 skirt block. So now, the interesting thing about this semi-circle skirt is you only use the front. You don't use... You Lucy's just coming in making coffee for all the cameramen and everything. Uh, you don't use the back. You don't use the back on this pattern, so we'll just put that to one side. So you're only going to use the front panel. So the first thing that you do is you draw a horizontal line across the block. I haven't got my ruler, Amy. Amy? I use this, I use my French curve ruler, but I wanted my ruler in. Okay. Right, okay, I'm gonna use one of the, the pencils, one of my um, adjustable pencils here as well. So you literally draw a line across the bottom of the block where the bottom of the dart is there. So I've just drawn a line straight across the bottom here across the bottom of the dart. I've just done it in the green pencil there, which is, this is the mechanical pencil. Uh, that's the French curve I just used there, because they're my big, uh, oh, there, the ruler's coming in there. Just bang it all on the corner there. Okay, so I've done that, I've done that. So then what you have to do is you have to then cut that from the rest of the skirt. Mm. Have I got my paper scissors in? Oh, it's not going very well yet, is it? My paper scissors there. Oh, brilliant, thanks. Right, okay. So we just literally cut that off. This is going to become the yoke of the skirt. Now you're saying, why do I need to... Or oh, first of all, you might be saying, what is a yoke, right? 
a yoke is a bit that you have them, you know, cowboy shirts have yokes. It's the bit that goes here. But on a skirt, if you make a yoke, I have to tuck myself in, if you make a yoke that goes around here, it means you've got no gathers around your waist. It means you've got no fullness around your waist. It means you've got a lovely flat panel that goes all the way around, and then the fullness of the skirt kicks out from the bottom of the yoke. So if you're going to wear a jumper, say, over the top, you have that lovely, sleek, slimline look sort of thing. It, it means if you've got a gathered skirt that's all here and then you put a jumper over it, you get that, like, muffin top of a skirt, don't you? Whereas this, having a yoke, keeps it lovely and flat all the way around uh, your waist and all the way around the top hip. So this bit here is going to become your yoke of your dress, right? So then we move on from there. Now, what you need to do now is get some pattern paper. This is our... Uh, uh, I've got a, a proper packet of it here, if not yet. The, this one, this is a check one. It's the Millwood squared paper. Right, I've got plain as well. I've got plain as well, which I'll show you why I'll use the plain one in a minute. So this is the Millwood square paper. So open it now. In real life, I would give that a quick press to get rid of the to get rid of the creases. This isn't real life, is it? Right. Oh, I don't know. If, I, might, I might need another one of those. Right. So if your piece of paper isn't big enough, what you can do is you can just get another piece and stick them together like this. So you've got lots of room to play with. And because you've got the lines, you know you can line it up. Oops, there we go. Right, and then all you need to do is just stick it together. I'm not going to use the squares on the paper as measurements or anything like that. It's just some people, the real pattern, pattern cutting paper has dots and crosses on it, so you can match up the seams and everything like that, but I'm not going to do that. So you just literally create a bigger piece of paper like that. Right, so then this is the yoke that you put to one side. I'm not yoking, you put that to one side. Then this is your skirt body. This is your main skirt panel here. Now, no, it looks nothing like a skirt yet. Little Paul's getting very confused. Then what you do is you keep the centre front of the skirt, which was this, uh, which was, uh, well, you can have either side, but that's the side, your centre front there. Yeah, you put that on your paper. Then you get your pins, your dressmaker pins. Dressmaker pins coming in. It's all about having the right basic tools, isn't it? And then you literally... Pin the centre front of the skirt. I've just turned it over because I want the centre. Oh, actually, I could do it. No, I'll, I'll do it this way. Do it this way. So you pin the centre of the front to the paper. It's just to hold it in place. Right, because you're going to be moving it again in a minute. So you're making sure that the centre front, which is this, stays on your straight of grain. OK, right, that's there. No, be quiet. Paul's saying these are hands that have made clothes for Angelina Jolie. I know. Who else? Julia Roberts. Uh, Tom. I didn't make any of Tom Cruise's, but I was there with the bake. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, keep it centre. Now, what you do is you get your ruler, your long ruler. I just saw her bring it in. There it is. <laughs> right. And you just cut. We draw a line first. Oh, no, because Angelina Jolie didn't see all of this bit, did she? Where's my green? <laughs> Just a minute, Mr. Jolie, I'll be with you. No, she was... I nearly got fired because of Angelina Jolie. Not because of anything nasty, but what happened was, every day I'm filming on Tomb Raider, because I was doing this morning at the same time, she used to stop filming at 11 o'clock on a Monday and a Thursday and go to a Winnebago, and in the end they said, why do you always disappear off? for, like, ten minutes at 11 o'clock. She said, well, I got to watch John on the telly. And they were like, John, who? And they were trying, you know our John. I got to watch him do his fashion slot on this morning. They were like, what do you mean? And, of course, I hadn't told... It, wasn't, it was Paramount, I think, that had made that. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, let's just draw a line. No, they did, I didn't tell them. I'd been just saying, oh, I'm just in London shopping if you need me. And I was really, you know... Well, I didn't think the, I didn't think the American producers would be watching daytime telly, did I? So what you do is you slice down the middle of your pattern. 
Doesn't matter if this... Then you're not going to use that line as a cutting line at all. And then what you do, as I'll show you on here, is you pivot, keeping this one in place here, you pivot the panel around like that, depending on how full you want the skirt. And does it tell you how, how much they want it to go? Pivot the pivot. Towards the centre. Right. You pivot that around like that, and you pin that in place. So you're creating a much wider panel. Ooh, come on, that's it. Then, to make it even more full, I'll give it more fullness on the skirt. Oh, come on, John. There you go. I'm under pressure, under pressure. You then measure this, the size of the, how big you've added on here, which is five and a half inches. And then you add about half of that again on here. The more you add, the more kick the skirt has got. So let's add four inches. Oh, it's the white one. Let's add four, four inches on there, right? Then we get the ruler and we take them from that point. We take that down to there. So you go. And then, then this becomes your hem. This, you then curve... Oh, I can show you that with the French curve in a minute. So this becomes a quarter panel of your skirt, right? Then what you do is you then cut that out. Oh, no, before you cut it out, decide how long you want the skirt. Decide how long you want the finished skirt. Now, remember, you've got a four and a half inch yoke. So measure, you've got your tape measure tied around your middle there. You measure down to where you want your skirt to be on the sides of your leg. So imagine I want mine to be... I'll just go to the knot, that's the same measure. I can't come round there, I'm afraid. So you measure from your waist here, remembering there's a four and a half inch yoke, but you measure how long you want it. So what meant... Well, I, no, I need it below the knee, I think, at my age. So could you just go down and see what measurement I need to be? Just take the, take the camera down and go to what the number, what number I need it on. What number does that say just below the knee? There we go. Keep going. Oh, no longer. No, that's above me. Keep going down. No, that's... The, my knee's there, look. For 24 inches. Right, I want it 24 inches. Then you take off the four inches of the yoke. So you know that the skirt section has to be 20 inches long. So... You mark 20 inches on here. Oh, it's almost exactly where it is, look. Oh, I keep, pick, I keep picking the white one up. I do apologise. So that's 20 inches. Yeah, the white one's for your fabric. And then you can go around like this, 20 inches, and just measuring 20 inches down from the seam to your hemline here, and then the same here. 20 inches down. Oh, I've got that one a bit wrong, you see there. So that line goes there. So that is your new hemline there. So we take uh, this off, cut this out. These are paper scissors, obviously. Never, ever, ever use your cutting shears to use paper, right? Then this is my hem. Right, OK. So, that is a quarter of your skirt. And then what you do... Remember the yoke that we had earlier? This is the dart that makes the shape in the yoke. This is the centre front again. So, what you do... You can do it two ways. This is the way I do it. You cut the dart out. This stays on straight of grain, remember? That goes round there like that, and that becomes your yoke, right? Then what you need to do, get your pattern paper again. Remember, that's the straighter grain at the front there. You put, just pop that on your piece of paper. I won't bother pinning it there. And this is your, this is your centre front here. We'll start there, right? That's your centre front line. This is your waistline here. 
This is your hip line here. And then this will be where you attach the skirt to. Now, it might look a little bit uneven at the moment. We, in a minute, we'll get our French curve and we'll just, there you go, just curve that. You see, I've gone a little bit haywire there, haven't I? So you just curve. Oh, can you not see the green? Did Amy bring the marker in with her? Because I can do it with the felt pen if you want. No? Okay. Can you not see, can you not see that there? Oh, no, it's a bit dark, isn't it? A blight, isn't it? I'll cut it out. You better see it if I cut it out. Okay, so this is the centre front, just for me to remember. Cutting down there. Let me cut around here. You have to concentrate, that's why I've gone a bit quiet. Not yet, this isn't the pattern yet, Paul. No! Right. Oh, yes, yes, once you've... Thank you. Once you've, um... Once you've made the pattern, you just keep it. Like, Joe, like, it's like when Joe makes all her animals, she just keeps them in, a, in, a, in a, an envelope and, fi you know, it's filed away. Right, now, but I'm not finished yet, you see. So let's take these pieces off so we can put these to one side, the panels from our original basic block. Right. Remember that this is the centre front here. OK, put those to one side. Right, so then what you need to do, you need to... Because you'd have to cut four of those. So rather than having four seams... I wonder if it'll fit. I'll get the other cutting paper. Let, use some other paper pattern here, look, the pa pattern paper, just so I can show you all the different ones we've got. If you don't want um, pattern paper with the dots on it or the squares on it, we've got it in plain as well, haven't we, Paul? Three sheets you get, three sheets to the wind. £2.45. Right. Right, so you get a big, this is a nice big piece, right? What you can do, you can either do this on the fabric or you can do it on a piece of paper. I hope I've got enough room here on this one. Yep, 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 yep. Just, only just. So then what you do is you then, I won't cut it out now, so you can either make a paper pattern piece that is the whole half of the skirt, or, I'll do it in the calico in a minute, you can just put that on the fold, and then you cut two panels instead of uh, four, and then you cut this on the fold, and then, oh no, now, I've got to, I've got to point something else up, I'll do that when we, cut, when we cut it out afterwards. So you cut one panel for the front on the fold, and then the back panel, you cut on the selvage, the other way around. I'll show you, I'll show you. So that is your skirt pattern, and that is your yoke pattern, having used the square paper or the plain paper there. Um, I'll just show you this very quickly before, then I can just put it to one side of the to get in the way. This was the basic block that I showed you at the beginning, so you couldn't see it properly. So when you print yours up from the book, this is what you get, you see, this is your back. That's your centre back that seam there. Um, now, the other tracing paper I've got is coloured for when I do the actual tracing a wheel later. This is what happens. Little Paul doesn't know anything. Little Paul's learning along with you, you see. So, anyway, so that's your, that's your centre-back seam. That's your back neckline. That's... Yeah, I'll know to do it like this next time. Um, I thought you'd be able to see the design. So, that is your basic block. That's what you work from all the time. This is a size 14 basic block. So, that is half of your back. This one... ..is half of your front. Again, this is the bus start, the waist start, the bus start, and then that's a dot. Now, you see, when I come to do the other show with Sheila, I'll show you how you can manipulate this dart, because not everybody wants a dart going from their shoulder seam down. Make that into a princess seam. You can make it into a bus dart. I'll just... Shall I just tell you quickly? A lot of times... Oh, it's half past, right. Now, I'm, I, this is going completely and utterly off-piece, but let me just show you, right? A lot of people don't like a dart going down from the top of their shoulder through. So let me just, just take this off. Uh, Lynn, John's pattern cutting tutorial is the best thing on sale. Oh, Lynn, that's lovely. Would love to see it's a regular hour. Oh, pfft. <laughs> Lynn, I'm... No. I am going to do it. You know my lovely model, Sheila, from Paver's Shoes? She's on Ideal Worlds. Well, you'll know, might know from Ideal Worlds. Um, I'm going to get her to come in, cos she doesn't mind standing in a bit of calico, chatting away while I kind of make a twirl for her. 
Right, I know I'm going completely and utterly off piece here, but what, what I'm actually going to do is show you very quickly, because a lot of ladies ask me how to do this. They buy a pattern, because sometimes you buy a shop pattern, don't you, that has a dart in the top here, and you don't want a dart in the top there. Right, this is... A, no, no, I'm on the top. That's, a, that, that's an armhole there, you see. Oh, no, hang on, that's an armhole that way around, so I'm wrong way around. So, like that, little Paul's getting confused. He thinks this is part of the skirt still. This is the bodice, right? So, all you do, what you need to do is this is why you need to make a twelve, because that there should be your nipple point, really, your point to point where your nipple is. But sometimes you have to move it, and I'll show you how to do that when we do the masterclass. But if you don't want a dart going up there, all you have to do is do exactly what I did with the skirt. You cut the bust dart out. Right? You put those two edges together, like this, and it will cause... You'll see now, see little Paul, if you did that with a piece of fabric, that gives you the shaping of a bust there, you see, because you put my dart. But all you have to do to get rid of that, to create a bust dart on the side, is, yeah, is you put... But you, this dart, you see, will be under here rather than coming down there. So then what happens is that goes to there, There you go. So you, what you've done is... It's a bit wobbly, I've done it too quickly. But you create... So you've closed the dart that's running from here to here and you've created a dart that runs from there to there, you see? So, so that's how you can manipulate a dart. I've just shown that very, very quickly. What you can also do is create a princess scene, but we'll do that another day. We'll do that another day because I need to get on with the skirt now. So let's put all that to one side, all that to one side. Oh, and then just quickly, there was the sleeve block. That's the sleeve block. Because your back of your sleeve always looks different to the front of your sleeve. OK, so that's all to one side, that's all to one side. Right, so then what you need to do is you need to cut it out of the fabric. So I'm going to cut... I'm, I hope I'm allowed to cut into this calico. <laughs> if, you, if your calico arrives with uh, a piece missing out, it was me. Right, so... Three metres, I think I've got it here. <laughs> right, so what you do is fold your fabric... Now, this is if you're making a toile, but obviously you use real fabric right sides together. There you go. So you fold the fabric like that. Right. Then you get... Now, this is the centre front of your skirt here. So you mark the centre front... No, you don't mark it. You put your, your block pattern down the centre front so you know you've got the straight of grain going right down the centre of your skirt. It means your side seam is on the bias, which means it'll give it that swish. Like that. Right, now what I do, there's no seam allowance, remember, there's no seam allowance at all on here. So what I do is I get my green pen, my tape measure, and th this is a bit laborious, this. So I just mark my five, whatever seam allowance you like to do. Now I, put, I always put two inches on the hem. And then I put five eighths of an inch everywhere else. Well, there's a meeting going on in my dressing room. I can hear them all laughing. Five eighths. No, they're not watching. <laughs> uh, do you mind? Uh, five eighths. I haven't got... No, the marker's not a marker marker. The marker. Right, so then I use my cutting shears, which are fantastic. Make sure you have a lovely pair of cutting shears. And then, and at this point, it doesn't matter how... It's not the end of the world, because this is a toile, remember? We're making a toile. So, yes, so a toile is like a pattern on fabric, isn't it, really? But you can, you could, if you're confident, you could just be cutting this out of the actual fabric itself now, couldn't you? So we've cut out the front panel like that. Now I'm not going to cut the back panel out because it'll take two. Oh, maybe. No, well, I won't cut the back panel out. What you would then do with the back panel is because it's exactly the same size. In fact, I'll do it like this. Though. I just don't want to waste too much fabric because this won't be able to get made into anything. Is you then put the centre back, so you fold it over that way. That then becomes your centre-back. Now, I always leave two inches at the centre-back as well. 
You could pin that down, and then you'd cut out... Shall I do it? Shall I just do it? I'll just do it. How long have I got? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'll make, I'll make, a, make the whole frock by then. Righty-ho. So... Yeah, you, you don't have to wear a tape measure around your neck, no problem. I'm a bit messy, aren't I, today? Never have pins in your mouth. You should never have pins in your mouth. Right, OK, so then we can get rid of the bulk of the calico then. So we then cut uh, this out exactly the same, because it's got the seam allowance incorporated into it. But um, at the selvage, right, at the centre back, I always leave two inches there because you never know if you're going to need to let it out. And that's always the best place to have the excess. In and just in case you need to give it that little bit extra. So what we then do is you then, to mark up your actual pattern shape that you're going to sew, you get your tracing wheel. This is what I do, anyway. This is the way I do it. Lots of people do it differently. You get your tracing wheel. Now, mine, it looks like a Game of Thrones um, war torture thing. You see, this is a tracing wheel. You got the right one? Right? This is the tracing wheel, right? Mine has got spikes on it like this long. And they're really, really sharp. This one's obviously a little bit um, more user-friendly. £1.95. We've got two of them. We've got another one that's a flat one, haven't we, somewhere? There it is. There's this one here as well which doesn't have any spikes on it whatsoever. It just, just very flat, very, it's got ergonomic, ergonomic, £4.25, that one. I'm just going to use this one because it's more like mine. Then what you need is you need some colourful tracing paper. Now, this is new to me. I've not seen this one before. Uh, I, I don't know if it's been, I think it's been on before, hasn't it? I think Wendy was saying. But look, but look, but look, look. You can get white, obviously, which we're not going to use now. Then you get yellow, pink and blue and green. You normally get two whites in a packet because you use white more often. It, the traditional is the um, orange, the blue and the white that we normally get. Now, what it is, what I think the difference is, is the one that you get, the traditional one that I always use, if you touch it, you get all carbon all over your fingers. This one, I'm hoping... Now, what I do to make it easier is I take an old cardboard box... I do it nicely, obviously. And I make myself a backing to this and I stick the tracing paper down to the backing. Because I'll show you why, because you have to keep moving it round. It's bringing so many memories back, this, you know. Uh, lots of mixed memories. So I'd get a big piece of cardboard, because what you're then going to do is you're then going to get your tracing paper and you're going to mark... Your hemline on. See? Oh, now, I wonder if you can pick that up. So if you... Oh, there you go. There you say. So you've used... Your, now, the reason I put it on a piece of cardboard, right, is I'd normally get a big piece of cardboard, a big bit of balsa wood, and cover the whole lot with... Because this way, you have to keep moving it. Every eight, eight inches or so, you have to keep moving it, don't you? Whereas if it's all on one big board, you can do it all in one go. So you just then trace... Or these are the lines that you're going to stitch on. I've gone a bit wobbly there. Ooh. I'd suggest using more pins than this because it's moving a little bit. But So, you see, that should have now, on this side, we should have exactly... Oh, I haven't, I haven't gone right to the end there. But you have exactly the seam line. So you've got your, the bit where it joins to the yoke and then you've also got your side seam and your hem, and then that's obviously on the fold for the centre front. And then you do exactly the same uh, what, for the back. What you do is you take this off. Um, what I should have done, I've missed one thing out, I do apologise, is I would have marked on this pattern where the original dart from the yoke was, just so you can match it so you know it's going to go in. It's not essential, but you know where it's got to go. So now this side's got nothing on it at all, so what you do is you just flip it over... You've already got your pink lines on this side, so you just retrace 
your line through. So then it's on that side as well. So I'll just show you quickly. Oh, you see, in the old days, when I used to do this as a job, a proper job, I used to drink gallons and gallons of coffee. I'd have a percolator on my cutting table. And I hate to say it, and it was a long time ago, I was a 40-a-day smoker as well. So I'd be like this. <laughs> While I was cutting out. <sighs> oh, I was dreadful. I haven't smoked for 20-odd years now, something like 26 years or something I haven't smoked for now. But when I was doing this, oh, I was a real heavy, heavy smoker. And I, I remember making some costumes for one of the West End shows, I can't remember which one, and they rang me up going, we can't use these, they stink of cigarettes. And it was then I thought, oh, actually, if I'm going to do this as a job, I have to just be careful. So then, what you can do is you can open this one out. And you've got your front panel of your skirt. So you can see already, you can see now. Oh, I'll come out there and show you in a minute. Um, this is your front panel of your skirt. So you've got, this is where it's going to join to the yoke with your 5-8 seam allowance. These are your side seams going down here. I don't know if, can you see it from there? Uh, actually, we, we, leave, we leave the mannequin in and I'll show you because I'll, I'll cut out, I'll cut out um, a yoke as well. Well, that's the other part of the skirt, but not chop that one up. <laughs> if you've got any questions, get them in. I know you've all gone a bit quiet on me because you're all like going... What's he doing? What's he doing over there? I'm trying to find a piece that I can just cut the yoke out of so without, without wasting anything. Right, so this is on the... I'll do the centre back yoke first of all. What well, doesn't matter if I do, do... Oh, no, I have to do the front. Hang on, let's do the front. Oh, yeah, don't worry. I mean, just to... So, let's just put that on there. The centre front's there, so the front... Oh, it's not big enough. The piece isn't big enough, I don't know. Oh, I'll do it that way. I nearly swore then. You see, I'm thinking now, I'm in my cutting room. <laughs> um, okay, quickly, Diane, just loving this. Thank you so much. Looking forward to your next workshop. Thank you, Diane, my lovely. It was another one. Uh, John, I love you. You're a hoot. Lots of love, Lisa. Oh, thank you, Lisa. I'm trying to be serious today. Uh, Leslie says... Morning, John. Does this apply to plus sizes? Um, Leslie, the book... <laughs> Let me see what size the book goes up to. What I'll have to do, Leslie, if it doesn't go up to plus sizes, I'll have to do a special one on plus sizes. What I could do as well... There's the measurements. Um, what I could do as well is I could show you how to... If you've already got a pattern at home, I could show you how to manipulate a shop-bought pattern. Right, this goes up to UK size 20... So I could show you how to do it, how, how to do it. Oh, well, very quick. Morning, John. Nice to see you doing some work today for a change. <clears throat> Only joking. We know you always work hard. Lots of love, Andrew and Hillary. Thank you. One last message. Uh, John, I'm loving this hour. I'm learning loads. You make it look easy and your instructions are easy to follow. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Right, this is the yoke, right? This is the yoke for the waist. So again, it's the centre front, so that goes on the fold. I think it helps that I train to be a teacher. Before I did all of this, you see, and I did my um, final teaching practice in Garforth Comprehensive in Leeds and absolutely loved the lessons, hated the um, staff room. No, the kids were brilliant. But I tell you what I love most, and this is going to... is um, they had in that school something I'd never come across because I'd gone... Well, I'd gone to school a lot long, long before that, but they had non-examination classes and I didn't really understand those. And literally, they just went, oh, they're no good. And they just put these kids into a non-examination class and I was teaching drama and English at the time, and I just thought that is... Because different people develop at different ages. They might be 13 and just be a little bit... Not slow. I, I mean, I didn't come, you know, really work hard until I was in my O-level year. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like... I just kind of felt a little bit sad. Anyway, I had the best time with these kids. And you had to fill in... Oh, you had to fill it. Oh, that's a bit too big, John. You had to fill in, a, um, a, a, you know, their little homework book and their record book and everything. And I took my time and I wrote exactly about oh, every little child, every child in there. And the parents would come in and see me going, not one teacher has ever said anything nice about my daughter or son or everything. And the fact that, you know, and I just think, I hope I inspired them to, you know, kind of... I just felt it used to make me really sad. I'd go back to my digs at college and just think... They've given up on those kids already. And the, look at me talking psychology now while I'm doing my cutting out. Right, so this is the yolk. Uh, 
hello, I'm a new customer today. Oh, blimey. My question is, all your fabrics are quoted by the half metre. If I order three metres, will I get one piece? That's from Joanne. Joanne, if you buy a fabric off the bolt, right, off... So if I'm selling fabric... Earlier, right, we had the kits and then I was selling the mountain fabric, wasn't I? If I'm selling the fabric by a half metre, you, whatever length you buy, it comes... So if you want three metres, it comes as three metres. Yeah, or if, yeah, so you buy six units. If you ring the call centre, they'll help you. If you buy them on the web... Oh, no, no, you can't buy six units on the web at the moment. We've got an issue. You have to... Anything above a metre and a half, you have to ring the call centre. But if you buy a bundle, you know when we put a bundle together... If you buy two bundles, they don't come joined together. But if you, when I'm wafting and saying it's so much for half metre, obviously, it's like in the shop. You go into the shop and you see the label that says £20 a metre, and you go, three metres, please, and they go like that. Well, that's what our cutting room does. They just cut it like that. But the bundles are already cut, you see, so we can't change, we can't change the bundles. Right, where's my pink bit? <laughs> I'm not normally this messy. I've got another message, another message. Uh, Best programme for weeks. This is better than my dressmaking course. Oh, Sandra. Do you know what, Sandra? My clairvoyant said I was going to be changing jobs in September. We're in September, aren't we? Oh, it's all gone quite very quiet. <laughs> right, so this is the yoke. Let's just do this. Oh, I should have kept the sewing machine out, really, shouldn't I? Never mind. I'll pin it. It'll be fine. So this is the yoke, right? This is the front yoke. Mark that one up again, like this. Oh, and a bit wobbly. It's all gone quiet, I do apologise. Oh, I've gone offline there. Right, and then this one goes like this. Let me just put that around. Right, so this, Therese, this is... Teresa, sorry, this is fantastic. Showing the pattern cutting, more of this, please. Do you know, Teresa, do you know why? I'm, being, I'm going to be blatant now and I'll get into real trouble for this. I think it's because... I think it's worth doing shows like this because obviously the calico sold out. The book is selling so fast. The scissors, but there's no full sell, 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 is there? And we are a shopping channel after all. But I agree. I think every now and then we should do one like this. Right. That is your yoke, right? So this, I'll do it on the mannequin. I'll do it on the mannequin. This sits there, right? On the, on the dress. That sits there. It's a shame it's the same colour as the stand, isn't it? So that sits there, right? That's your yoke, that sits there. So you've got no fullness or anything going over your hips or over your, you know, your, your chubby bits, really, right? Now, what you then do... <laughs> you should see the mess behind this desk. Right, OK, so let's just pin this together. Oh, blimey. Thank you, I've been watching for weeks and really enjoying your shows. Thank you, Joanne, my love. One more. John, your forte, what a lovely session. Please do some more. Lots of love from Angela. Oh, Angela, I love your last name. Uh, great hour. Thank you for sharing your skills. And it's costing them a fortune, Anne, I tell you. Right, so then what you do is you then match your centre fronts. I need my glasses. That's a change from when I used to do this. I didn't have glasses in those days. So you match your centre fronts and you pin those. Now, if you've done it properly, your seam allowances are the same size. I've done it a bit quickly today, so I've kind of missed it slightly. So you then pin your yoke to the main part of your skirt. Oh, that one's dead on. Just going round here like this. There's no fullness in this one, you see. There's no... Um, you could do gathering along here if you wanted, but that would make it a slightly different skirt. This one's a bit of a more sleek uh, and elegant skirt. Now, if, like Paul was saying, if you want to buy any fabrics to make... I'd buy the book. I'd definitely get the book. But if you want to um, get fabrics... I've not got fabrics in this show, but go to the website... Do it now while I'm pinning this. You can just show the website. There's a bit that says... You go, go to the main page, www. You go to shop in the top left-hand corner there. Fabrics. Plain fabric. Well, you have whatever fabric, really. Um, let, let's look at patterns. Should we look at patterns? Because then I can talk about pattern matching as well. So, let's have a look. Oh, no, you wouldn't do it to the seaside fabric. Let's go down. Oh, now you see... Right, the gerbera fabric. Make a very lightweight skirt. I think you might have to line that. Keep going down. Let's have a look. Well, they're all the, the cake. Oh, I don't know which one to choose. Right, OK, let's do that pop. What's that? I've never seen that poppy one. What's that one? The third one in. Ooh. Oh, no, no, but it's out, of, it's out of stock. It's out of stock, that one. This is Anna Marie Hall, I couldn't see it from the small, um, small picture. OK, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, all you have to do is you can either buy on the web or you can um, ring the call centre and they'll, uh, they'll sell it to you. 
Sorry, I picked the one. I, I should have known. I just looked at it thinking, oh, I don't recognise that. But I do, of course. I didn't recognise the little picture. Right, so what I've done here is I've just pinned the yoke. I don't know why there was a needle in that pin box, but there you go. Right, so I've pinned the yoke now to the skirt. Right, now, obviously, it's only pinned because I haven't got the sewing machine here. So let me just show it to you on the stand again. So what you're creating, when you've pressed it, so what you've created, you see, is this is the yoke, so it's nice and flat. This seam here, when you've sewn it and, and pressed it, that stays completely flush. But then, when you think you've got two of these, and you can make it wider if you want, look at the width of that skirt. Look how wide that skirt's going to be. You're going to have that twice. Oh, it's fallen down on the other side. But do you know what I mean? So you're going to make a full... I think I've made a bit more than a half circle in there, but, oh, no, maybe not. But it's really, really lovely and full. I don't know if I can show it better on me. No. Right. Oh. So that's it, really. That's it. That's all I'm going to show you today, I think. Was there anything else in my basket I was supposed to show you? Oh, yes. The only other thing I had to show you was this. When you're... If you haven't got a French curve... If you haven't got a French curve like this, how much was it? Is it 9 95 I think, isn't it? Or 10 95 or something like that. Oh, £9.50 it is. £9.50. It's very... You kind of look at it and you think, what on earth would they use that for? Can I just show you? I think they're brilliant. I think they're a brilliant purchase. If you want to change the back neckline, you use that bit of it. Armholes or sleeve... I showed you the sleeve block earlier. This is the, this is the curved rule. Oh, no, no, I was going to show the flexible rule, then I went on to the curve. Sorry, that, that's the flexible rule, which I'll show you about in a minute. If, well, I was saying if you haven't got one of these. 9.95 was right, 9.95 there. So if you want to make the, the waistline a little bit more curved, you can do. The armhole curve, the front neck curve. Now, it's very important. You see where I did the skirt, where I drew the, the, the bit of the uh, yoke around there? You can use it to get that the curve perfect. If you want to lift a waistline, you can lift it with this. You see, so you can use it for so many different things. Um, this is good. This is what Hannah needs it for, to just let all her skirts out, creating a new um, uh, hip line on there. Uh, it's the uh, Imperial. That one's in Imperial in inches, £9.95. However, if you haven't got one of those for £9.50, you can have one of these. Now, they look like the weirdest things, don't they? It's like... Um, uh, do what? Mike just said, I, had one, I used one of those this morning. What did he use it for? Mike said, I used one of those this morning. Right, this is if you want to create, especially good for sleeve heads, if you're not very good at drawing a curve. I've got to use to the stage where I just draw it by hand now. But if you're not very good at drawing curves, that, that, seam, that waist, right, that waist, when I did the waist, right, you could just use this. It's got, me it's got measurements on. It's got in mine never had inches and, and centimetres on. Right? Just creates a really lovely curve that you can then draw around. I'm not going to do it, but you can... Draw £9.50, that is. Mary, I've been making my own clothes since 1964. Until today, I never realised the relationship between a shoulder and a side duck. Thank you, Mary. She says, brilliant show. That's lovely. It's very touching, all of this. I said, when I came to this job, I'm not doing sewing. I'm not doing any pattern cutting. I'm not doing that. Uh, Erica, loving this show. So informative and helpful. My only complaint... Is that you're only on for four hours? Do you know what? I'm blooming knackered at the end of four hours, Erica. Oh, I'm not allowed to say that. I'm very tired, Erica, at the end of four hours. What a fabulous hour, Wendy says. Thank you very much. Oh, do you know what? It's really, really touching, all of this. I've got to come back and do it all again tomorrow, but not this. Um, I was going to say something important then. Book. You've got to buy the book. You've got to buy the book. <laughs> oh, there it is. If you've got it in your basket, please check out. Please check out. I didn't even show you what else was in the book, did I? So... There's all the information I showed you and the basic blocks and everything. But, and then uh, there's all about measuring yourself as well. If you can, get a friend to help you with that. Let me show you all the different... Like, there's all these skirt patterns. Um, pencil skirt. A-line skirt. Now, we've done that one before. We have made... Well, we didn't go as far with the calico on that one. A go day skirt. Now, it looks horrible in the picture. In real life, that can look so fabulous. But it just looks really, really... What's the word I'm looking for? Trampy? Is that the word? Am I allowed to say that? Am I not allowed to say that? Oh, I'll be in trouble again. No, I wouldn't say that word, Paul. Um, now, this is nice. It's a panel skirt. This is a panel skirt with little pleats in that go over the hips. I don't know if you see from there. Um, 
pages sticking together now. Tulip skirt. Now, this is lovely. This is a really lovely one to do because what it does is it, it accentuates the ladies' curves. And I think if you've got curves, ladies, you should show them off. But it's very... Uh, it would have been too difficult for me to do today because the pleating on that one is... Look at the pattern. Look at the pattern. It's very... Not very complicated, but that's a bit more advanced, that one. Uh, then there's the one I've just done. Now, a really lovely, I don't know if we've got the needle cords on our, our, we sell this really, really fine needle cord. Now, I know two of them were in Miss It, Miss Out yesterday, but that would be beautiful in one of those fine needle cords. This is the other one I was going to show you, the full circle skirt. That one, now, this one doesn't have the yoke on it. This one doesn't have a yoke, it just goes straight up to the waist, so you will get that fullness. Not as much, it's not gathered, it's not gathered, it's in panels. That's nice, that's the tube skirt that you need to stretch fabric for that. I don't think many of you will wear that, that's what we used to call the puffball skirt in the 80s, wasn't it? It's called a bubble skirt in here. But it's good to have the pattern, if you want to make it for your daughter and him. Uh, dern now, they call this a dirndl. In my day, a dirndl was just two squares of fabric sewn together with an elasticated waist. But that's not quite the same, that one, is it? Uh, and then the tiered skirt, but then all, what they've also got in here... Oh, and the box pleat. Oh, that was the other one I was going to do today, the box pleat skirt. But I think they make it overcomplicated. I'll show you how to do a simpler version of that. Kilt. Then, this is interesting because this shows you how to finish all your skirts and everything. So they don't just leave you with the pattern. They show you how to finish everything off. Then the dresses, look. Pin tuck shift dress. I love that one. That's like it's got a sun ray of pin tucks in it there. Sheath dress. These are simple ones. A-line dress. But again, look, it shows you what to do with... Oh, bodycon, that'll be, that'll be an advanced one, that one. Uh, shirt dress, that's a nice simple one to start with. Pinafore dress, that's cute, isn't it? Um, you'd have to be careful with that one. If you've got hips, be careful on that one, because I think the seam's just at the wrong place, a bit like um, Torville and Dean costume, that one, isn't it? Apron dress. Uh, sweater dress, now, obviously, you need knitted fabrics. We don't do knitted fabrics yet. And then... Oh, the wrap dress, that's gorgeous. We'll do that one one day. Um, one shoulder dress. A uh, little strapless party dress. Uh, Negligé. Uh, slip. Now, where's the... There was a ball gown in here, wasn't there? Halter neck dress. Bubble dress. Uh, look, the empire... Oh, empire. Now, empire's very flattering if you've got an apple body or you don't like your tummy, but you've got nice boobs. Uh, where's... I haven't got a message yet. Nothing's arrived. Uh, no, I've still got Wendy's there. Uh, maxi dress. This is nice, but you have to stretch for that one. Oh, Carol, fabulous programme, learning so much. Thank you, lots of love, Carol. You're my pleasure. Look at that evening gown there. That's lovely, isn't it? Great show, John. I know how to use some of my dressmaking tools. Oh, Alice, have you been buying them, not knowing how to use them? Uh, another Alison, wonderful show. We need more of them. I should have gone out. Oh, but I just can't miss any of the information you're giving. Thank you. Oh, that's really sweet of you. So there's all the information about dresses, about the necklines and things like that. You need to get that £11.95. pence. I'm going to... I've asked Wendy in the buying department... In fact, we've got a new buyer started today. I've gone... This could be his new... His first test. I want this book, but for blouses, because I think that would be an interesting one to do. Right, tomorrow's menu. I know I'm exhausted. Tomorrow's menu. Handmade home. Uh, eight o'clock, we've got Sew Kitchen. Oh, now it's just... It's just empty twistle tomorrow, isn't it? That'll be a laugh. Uh, no, that's, that came out wrong. That came out wrong. Eight o'clock, Sew Kitchen. Nine o'clock, Fabric Bundles. That'd be me. Oh, she's making a rug at ten o'clock. Ooh. And then, what's 11 o'clock? Hand-picked collection. I'm obviously going to have to go off now and hand-pick some things for you. I don't know what that is. Um, I love Jess. And if you are... There was one lady who got a bit upset last week or the week before that she thought I was being rude to Jess. Jess gives bigger than she gets, I tell you. And I made sure... I'd asked her and Jess said, oh, she'll tell you tomorrow, she's fine. Uh, you need to watch our faces. When we're bantering, I think if you're just listening, it might sound we're being a bit harsh, but actually if you watch our faces, you see the smile and the love between us, then you'll know it's um, not for real. Anyway, um, any questions you've got, 0800 112 4433. Make sure you check out your basket, because it's really, really important. We have so many messages, thank you so much. I haven't read all of them out, just the ones that came through, but thank you very much indeed. Um, I'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs> I don't talk, but make sure you check out your basket. I only say it not to add any undue pressure, but I do not want you missing out on anything at all. And it doesn't guarantee it unless you check it out. See you tomorrow. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Don't forget, shopping with us is easy and simple. You can just contact us at 0800 112 4433 and speak to our UK-based call centre to place an order or shop online with us at www.sewingquarter.com.